G'day and welcome to the Infront as I'm Execute that needs to have a shave and here's our group. How are you doing mate? I'm better than I have been in the past, but still not a hundred percent. I think but we're both like our friend Badgers in, yeah. in the um, <laughs> in the voice and the void. So I was about to say, yeah, I think he's better I think we're better than both of him though, yeah. So yeah, how you That's doing right. mate? You have been a bit under the weather. Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of the old Rona. Um, yeah. I, I'm laughing, so if, if at any point you ask questions and I don't respond, it's not me being rude. I'm probably muted and coughing my guts up. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's it's the, road, the good no. news is I've been no, now no, the um, negative for a couple of days now. Mm, uh, I tested fine. last or first tested negative on Sunday night. So uh, it's just dealing with the back end of it. It's lots of tired, lots of coughing. Um but yeah, we'll get there eventually. Probably a good thing I'm not on camera. I am even less photogenic than usual. Yeah, because he's in his underpants. No, that's fine. <laughs> we we yeah. know that's pretty always right when he's, when he's, you know. Oh, I'm always in my underpants, but yes. That. Yes. He just may have something on over the underpants, but he's always in his underpants. Yes. Hey, Geek and Feathers. How are you guys going? Okay, we've got some people in chat. That's good. Um, we're also on... Uh, I'm just going to double check it, but I think we're alive on uh, Twitch as well. Uh, it says offline. Hang on, I'm going to refresh. Yeah, I'm not seeing us online in Twitch at the moment. Uh, oh, it didn't start. Hang on, wait. Connecting, uh, broadcasting, and yep, should be cooking with gas now on there as well. But see, this is why I check things. Because if I don't check, they don't work here. But it's anyway. Just, uh, no, from the end, from the end. go away. Agrid, old man. Anyway. <laughs> That's because I was trying to refresh the screen and it, it turned the sound on. It's all good. All right, so we've got IRC. Um, badges is on. So whenever Badges is on, I always take the piss. Uh, that's why his favorite ship is on the picture. And yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. Uh, we had a, we've had a couple of people now come in very defensively of this ship, Badges, in, in the last few Fixed One oh, okay. Fleets. Uh, so the, the last guy was like, so have you seen the latest Fixed One Fleet we did on the weekend? You probably haven't uh, had a chance. Yeah. He, w he was. No, I haven't. He was very, he was very, like, I'm taking the Persis over the Polaris. This, so, so this guy <laughs> was a bit different to most of the Fix My Fleets we do. Because, like, he was so, uh, the word I would use out good was blasé. Would you kind of agree with that? He was someone who just had cash and he didn't need to worry about it. That was probably his, um, the biggest thing for him. Um, yeah. But he what, wanted, but he was still wanting to. That's what I meant by blasé. To get... Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, he just uh, yeah. You, you keep going, Agri. You, you keep going. Yeah, so he just wanted to get get best, uh, I suppose, a better bang for his buck for um, uh, for what he was doing. Um, oh shit! But he wasn't interested. He didn't really bother. It didn't really bother him that he didn't have mm -hmm. um, necessarily the best ship. At, but yeah, he loved he loved the Polaris. Mm. Not the Polaris, sorry. He loved the Perseus, and um, for him, it was just. The bee's knees, so yeah. The movement has started, my brothers. Yes, it has begun. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. We, we just shook our heads and said, Badgers. No, 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 badgers. no. no we, I think we're talking about what's happening in chat. Yes, it was in chat. Um, uh, he's, uh, Sam, Sam kicks it off with, let me sub up this screen by saying, everyone, if it's on a PTV, it's terrible. Yeah, so if you don't know, uh, I, I suggested to Paul, and we're running with it this year, that the PTV is going to be the MPUV of last year. <laughs> well, you know, the PTV, it, it was the very first vehicle yep. and ship that we ever had in Star Citizen. It was the first play, playable That is technically vehicle. true. That is uh, scarily true now I think about it, actually. That is true. That is true on so many levels. It's the oldie, oldest thing. Yeah, it really it is. It's the oldest playable ship vehicle yeah. in Star Citizen. It was, it, we were, you know, it was for the hangars, for you know, but people like me being able to traverse 100 mm. ship hangars and, and other things um, quickly without spending five minutes running. Um, <laughs> it was so popular, they even created the, it's true, people did used to spend five minutes running. I'm, I'm, laugh create... I'm laughing at Zen from chat because he's watching it two times. Uh, so we should just talk <laughs> really slow. Okay, like, so like it Aussie. sounds okay. normal. No, we should talk really fast so we sound even more like chipmunks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> be like, what the hell's going on? What? But they did also create the um, uh, the obstacle course for the uh, for the, the little PTV. So you had ramps and um, boxes mm. you could knock over and, and stack and. Yep. 
Um, they had a whole bunch of weird little things at the start. They did have a whole little yeah. bunch of weird little things that way, way back in the day. Um, but I think I think I think what you touched on there that it really was the first vehicle in the entire game, mm. vehicle, ship, whatever you want to call it. It was the first inner, fully. Um, Drivable because yes, there was things that were that, that were sat there and you could open a door and it animated and stuff, but it was the only one you could move around with. So yeah, yeah. actually, it would be kind of cool now. I think about it, it actually has a genuine reason to uh, to be. So the the uh, the the best in show because it is the oldest, the first, the and it's cute as it cute as crap anyway. And it was the first one to have skins that worked. So first shipping game, first one to have skins, True. first one to. Um, First one to kill people in Area 18. Yep. Uh, Greg, yeah, um, we're going to watch ISC in a little bit. Well, you generally wait till there's a few people before we start, just so there's a little bit of interaction. So this is us just catching up with each other, a uh, bit of banner with you guys, and, the, and then then we'll go in. So, yeah, yeah. shortly, though, shortly we'll be starting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you off work, Badges, as well, then, because of your, your Bruna? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to work from home, but... Um... It's it's not always the case. I mean, I did a couple of hours the other morning, and then I had to go lie down for four. Okay. Um, I, so yeah. it's just I'm lots of tired. I'm picturing a kind of Mr. Bean scenario where Badges is just lying on the couch, <laughs> and he's got like sticks, and he's trying to type on the computer, and, 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 he's, and he's got he's got little Teddy next to him, and <laughs> yep, yep, I could see that. Badges Bean, there you go. Oh, that's good. I, 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 we have to find Badges a little teddy bear now. Yeah, we now have him. to find him a teddy bear. Actually, we should so. send him. We should send him uh, the, 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 the mascot from Horizon, the, the space whale toy thing. Yeah, well, you know, I, I would have said the Pico, but Pico sold out. You yeah, can't Pico he, he's gone. But, uh, Pico's like... gone. He's no longer there. Mm. If you don't have him, you've missed out. I don't know what they're going to do when they move to Pyro. They won't be able to do stuff like that. Um, well, not no, muskets but... anyway. Here, here you go, have a lump of coal. It's our mascot. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You've been naughty today. Have a lump of coal. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Actually, I think of a very British... That, that, that uh, What someone said, what Ted Weller just said there in chat, uh, actually struck mm. me when I was a kid. Super Ted. <laughs> you remember Super Ted? Yep, I remember. Oh, yeah, it's such a British show. And um, oh. speaking of nostalgia berries, I was in a takeaway food restaurant the other day, mm -hmm. and they've done a remake of Danger Mouse. And Danger Mouse was made back in like the seventies. That time it got an update. <laughs> That's what it says. Fifty years late, but anyway. So yeah. All right, we've got enough people here now, so I think we'll kick it over to the Blazo, and we'll watch some ice. Don't forget to restart it for me, so that I hear yep. it in yep. the we'll same know. time as you do. Doing that now. Uh, this one. Here we go. Tell me if you can't hear it, by the way. Uh, yep. Outridden badges. Yep. It's our last episode of the quarter. For me. The patch is just around the corner. And speaking of which, what's. Did you say no sound? No, fine for me, thank you. As oh. I can't hear it. Oh. I said the opposite. What's in this quarter's Alpha 317 2 well, anyway? I I could hear it, Let's so recap there. in this quarter's patch report. Up first, let's start with some character items and these new variants of the RRS Specialist Heavy Armor coming to Alpha 317-2, including this traditional camo variant, an Arctic variant, and perhaps my personal favorite, the Radiation Resistant Fallout variant. That's pretty There's cool. also a new Grey Cat backpack specifically for the purpose of collecting salvage in preparation for when that day arrives. I'm going to ask, what do you guys think about variants? And I'm asking chat here as well. Do you think that's a bit of a cop-out or do you think that just adds even more variety for very little effort? And that's, um, that's kind of what I've, my take is. The very... I've got the helmet from the first variant. It's actually in the vest at the moment. Okay. But what... But, um, but, in loot crates. But what the, I mean, new the new colouring and... Yeah, and, uh, so that, that's kind of what I mean. Like, do, do, you, do you like the fact instead of making a whole new style, they're doing a, a variant so it just fills it out even more? Like, it's... it's um, so, so it's very cheap, little low effort, but it really does just feel like there's even more there. I, I like the fact that they look different, right? When they said Fallout variant and you're looking at that helm, I went, yeah, I can see that. Mm. I can see that as a radiation suit. The Arctic one was a bit meh. It was literally just colour changes. 
Um, uh, not really, because <laughs> also, like, if I go back, I'm going to go back, because I've got to prove badges mm -hmm. wrong. Any chance you get to prove badges wrong, you can take it. So we're up to 45 seconds. All right. Mm -hmm. So look at the vi The helmets are all different. Yes, but that one on the left is just the Morozov. Um, I thought they were all the same, just texture, just different colors. It's only the helmets that change. In my eyes, the helmets have changed by the look of it. Yeah, and yes, it, yeah. So it's just a text. But, it's just but a what text I mean is the one, the one in the middle and one on the right aren't available. I don't think the one in the middle is available at all. The one on the right is only lootable at this point, whereas the one on the left you can look like that. You'll just be a slightly different color. Yeah. So yeah, but what I'm saying you is, continue they, to try and prove me wrong, and yeah, continue to fail. No, no, I'm right because the three suits are exactly the same. Is in the only thing that's changed is the color. The text uh, only a texture change, but the the, the actual um, helmets um, are a different normal map, right? Um, and, and that so it's the same. It's the same um, same model. They just put a different normal map on, and that uh, it gives it a different outcome. Um, but I wonder <coughs> what I'm wondering is: can you take that? Um, are, are there going to be other variants of this helmet? So can you take that helmet and put it on the white suit, so to speak? Um, can mm. you mix and match? I'm just, I'm just curious. Can you pick your favorite helmet, or is that helmet locked to the radiation one? And, uh, this helmet's locked to the, to the camo one. Uh, was it? What did they call it? Based, based on the way it is, I'd say you could probably mix and match your helmets, but the color won't mm. match. Um, when I first saw it, my thinking was uh, <coughs> recolored spaceship, spaceship <laughs> again, and it, it gave me throwbacks to the. Uh, those non halcyon days of subscriber flair that was oh you've got a a chest piece for this and next month oh you've got the arm pieces for this and it was just literally recolored venture spacesuits and it was after a while you got fifty thousand different colored spacesuits. Well, that one I I can't remember what they said about the first. They've got the Arctic one. Maybe that's got different temperature variants. But the fact that they're actually mentioning it for different purposes, mm. and then this grey grey cat one, which is specific to salvage, yeah, maybe maybe the armors will actually end up doing something a little different over just yeah. I, I this would one's love... really hot, and this one's really cold. I would really like the Arctic one to give you better Arctic cold protection, mm -hmm. and the the radiation one to give you better heat protection or mm -hmm. radiation, so when you fly close to the sun, you don't <laughs> die. Um, mm. Or if you're in space, you know, for, it gives you a longer time in space because it's protecting you from the mm. nastiness of Absolutely. space. But yeah, I, I'd love to see them do that. But if it's just a recolored skin, ultimately at the end of the day, will be do. Yeah. So what uh, I'm trying to say is that it, 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 uh, the helmets are one step higher than just a recolored skin because yeah. it's yeah. um. There, so someone's had to go in and re high poly model something to get those mm. normal maps to work. So that's actually. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I'm surprised that they didn't make it as a whole new, a whole new suit. It makes me wonder how much mm -hmm. they're going to start cross pollinating stuff because they could cross pollinate quite a bit. And yeah, it's, it's just an interesting choice. I, I mean, I'm just interested to see where it's going to go. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. And for subscribers, here's a blast from Star Citizen's past with a look at the exploration themed vintage spacesuit commemorating RSI's that. first commercial. Yeah, how many people are going to buy that? A shit ton oh, of people. Well, that's, you're not buying it. It's subscriber flair. Oh, so in answer to the question people from... People will subscribe just to get it, our grid. In, a, in answer to the question from Feathers McGore, if I subscribe now, will I get that armor, i.e. the previous armor? No. You'll get this one. Hmm. All right. So, cool spaceship, the soon, Zeus. TM. Be sure you keep an eye out for that when it becomes available in the coming months. And in the space above Microtech and Arc Corp, you'll discover a number of new space stations being added that will make travel to and from the Stanton Classics easier than ever before, while adding additional visual flair through gas clouds at the Lagrange points, similar to those found around other planets. With so much of the focus on the upcoming... What what uh, locations were they? I missed it at the start. Just um, Arc, Arc Corp and Microtech. Arc Corp and Microtech, cool. Pyro these days, it's important to keep refining and improving the locations of Stanton, and that includes the addition of more medical rooms at Grimhex, 
because with all the recent player pirate activity, it was causing a bit of a traffic jam at times. Adding additional hangar exteriors for rest stops, enabling the addition of more small and medium hangars for sh yeah, because they're getting rid of pads, aren't they? I just yep. remember now. So mm -hmm. they, that, yeah. That's the, uh, my understanding, because then you can actually despawn and spawn ships without having them suddenly mm -hmm. just pop out of existence. And not having to run out. In, you can, basically, means you can go between ships without going into atmosphere yep. now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ships to these locations and the ability to summon and store a greater variety of spacecraft along the way. Hang on, that hangar looked different. I haven't seen that hangar. Yes, that's what they're saying. It's darker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a brown. That's what I was saying, different, different hangar skins and stuff. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Spacecraft Excuse along me. the way. And down on the surface of our planets, the beginnings of our derelict outpost rollout, starting with these relics of past life in the verse on Microtech. Oh, this bad boy's on Microtech. Designed to create more opportunities for exploration, missions, loot, and the like, 3172 will find several here as more are added in subsequent patches throughout the remainder of this year. And speaking of missions, Alpha 3172 has additions and refinements galore, starting with the revamp of the Combat Assist Service Beacon system, aiming to provide a more natural progression for players from fighting Tiny Aurora, all the way up to massive Idrises, or Idri, or Idro, I don't know. There's also more collect and delivery mission progression for the dedicated criminal element and those who maybe just want a little more scratch by stepping just outside the lines of the law sometimes. And then there's the new crashed reclaimer derelict settlements, which come with a variety of new missions requiring players to explore. I'm kind of intrigued to see with a ship as big as the reclaimer, how many times they can make it look different. Yeah, I, I, My, I think that that's a really good test. Like out of all the ships, like that's a because like, it's fairly big. I guess you could do it with an A ninety jump, or but but, but yeah. I think it's going to show how well they've worked that out. And mm. might just just based on what they showed us previously, and even this just reminds me again of the of the mm. uh, of the frustration I've got in terms of the artwork. Now, it's not bagging the artwork because it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. But it's the logic of the artwork. And you picked it up last time when you said, mm. gee, the, the plant growth on those is massive. Um, you know, they've been there yeah, ages. Yeah, why, why is yet, the trees not growing back here? And then the trees are, are still knocked down and freshly, you know, you can see they're freshly knocked down and still got the mm. foliage, whereas those knocked down trees would be dead and you'd have new saplings. Well, yeah, they, 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 in, either, in the they either would have broken down or they would have been removed yeah. for the housing settlement or there's so many, you could have told a bit more story with those. Yeah. Plants. So yeah. my thought is if the ship's either clean and the foliage behind it is wrecked and, sm yeah. and smashed with smithereens but that, or maybe that's a part of it. Our group. Ma and, maybe we saw it in two different states and maybe that is how it will happen over time. Um, yeah. Maybe they, yeah, I don't know. We've got to get, we've got to, we've got to see it in the final version before we. Can, so uh, I hope, I hope it, as you just suggested, it's a progression yeah. over time. As, as you see them fresh, they're like they have yeah. one way, you see them the other way there. But then we also did say it might be a part of deliberately done that way, so the the wrecks are easier to yeah. find because obviously there's a big, you know, you got you got all this wood and all of a sudden, what's that? What's that line there? You know, you can see it yeah. from space and go in and have a look. Oh my god, it begins early today. Right. Yeah. All right, here we go. Or attack, defend, and otherwise experience the majesty of these fantastic new locations made possible with help from the next major milestone from our AI team, Dynamic Planetary Nav Mesh, which will allow mission designers to begin adding NPC life to not just these new derelicts, but any other curiosities you might find on the surface of Stanton's planets and moons. And if you thought the crashed reclaimers were the only new derelicts to explore in Alpha 317-2, be sure you head out into the farthest reaches of Stanton That's and discover cool. for yourself a host of new missions. Anyone find it ironically funny that the reclaimer is probably going to be the first ship that is able to salvage itself? I find that kind of <laughs> funny. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> content linked to these brand new space-bound derelicts included in this quarter's patch as well.
Then finally, the big mammer jammer dynamic event of them all so far. The Siege of Orizen is bringing with it an FPS event the likes of which has never been attempted in Star Citizen, pitting players against the criminally industrialist Ninetales in a battle to decide how Orizen should be pronounced. This is going to be a really big test of the AI system. Mm. This is either going to go mm. really well or it's just going to... Uh, let's be honest, though. Those you, And you've been playing a lot of them too, Badgers. Those bunker missions, they're a lot better than they were, I don't know, yeah. four months ago. You, you, I mean, the, the, they're directly tied to the health of the server. So yeah. the better the yeah. tick rate, the better the um, the better the AI perform. Um, our kind of in joke is they're either Derp Team Six or Seal Team Six. Um, there doesn't <laughs> like seem that. to be an. They're either you know thick as mints or they are terrifyingly accurate. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. but it goes to show that those few times, if anyone's experienced that, those few times where you do get them behaving like they're supposed to, they're terrifying. Mm. Oh my god, won't let me out, let me out. <laughs> and, and with an have mesh. And, I, and just imagine when they're if they're working really well and you go yeah. in and then they chase you out. They may even yes. follow you. Mm. Like that's yeah. I also <laughs> I also think um it's good uh, level design wise it's a good juxtaposition because Orizon's so clean and pristine, almost like a you know, like like it was an origin setup and then like this is like someone's just come and commandeered the whole area and it's trashed. Like yep. they've had it mm -hmm. like an all night bender and everything's just trash. You you can actually kind of see what they've done or because yeah. the, the kind of maps there at the moment. Mm. Um in the current version. You go up to the top flight of the um showcase building and there's a shuttle that'll take you uh, here and mm. it is it is trashed. There's boxes and um crates and defensive setups and mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. So yeah. Yeah. Is it Orizen or Horizon? Potato? Tomato? We may never know, but the battle across this new expansion to the Orizen landing zone will be an involved one with many, many fronts. Can you tell I recorded the patch report at a different time? But while we're talking about the Siege of Orizen, while we do want to leave most of its twists and turns for you to discover on your own, we did ask Luke and Elliot from the Mission Feature Team for some helpful hints to this year's major event. Let's see what they had to say in a segment that we're calling Siege of Orison Top 10 Pro Tips. This event is like nothing you've experienced in Star Citizen so far. You will need to prepare. You will need ammo, weapons, armor. Otherwise, you will not make it out alive. So like like that. That. Sorry, mate. Shall we accepted? You you both talked it twice twice now. That's just what you're saying. Mm. I know. I just like it when they say things like that. I think it's great. And then we smash it, and it's easily. <laughs> and, then we smash it. and my and my response was challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, most definitely. All right, here we go. The iffy, which is the identifier friend or foe inverter, and basically what that does is that's going to turn the platform's turrets onto the side of the nine tails it also affects the restricted area so you won't be able to fly your ship in these are, new platforms are huge um, and we have done the, the best we can to sign these and put maps up all over the place that show you like you are here you'll find signage all around that shows you where shuttles are to get between the islands however they are slightly different to how shuttles uh, currently work. They're more like elevators in that you have to call them to your location and when you get in you have to send them to the next location. So be aware of that. You can't get to all the islands via the shuttles, but we've put enough toys around to allow you to get there a different way. So there are various locked containers all over the island. You'll need a code to get into them. Make sure to check them all because they have a multitude of surprises. That means that we've like... a maze. It means one of them is going to have a bad guy come out and shoot you. Yep. <laughs> Guaranteed. Or explode. Yeah, or something like that. Uh, in this somewhere, uh, just remember that you can't jump as far when you're wearing heavy armor. This event might take a while, so don't forget to loot your fallen enemies. We decided as as we weren't going to hold player. Say that again. As long as they fix the inventory bug. Mm, true. Yes, yeah, so that never-ending inventory is. 
miserable in this mission. There are a lot of optional secret objectives that players will have to figure out for themselves. With combat assist service beacons, illegal collect and delivery missions, a variety of new missions and NPC opportunities embedded in the new reclaimer derelicts, the siege of auras and, and more, Alpha 317-2 may have the numbering of just a little tiny point patch, but there's a whole bunch of new gameplay packed with it. Now that about does it for this quarter's ISE, but keep an eye on the robertspaceindustries.com website for details on the release of Alpha 317-2 while we're on our regularly scheduled hiatus. And uh, when we come back, maybe we'll do so from inside the new performance capture stage being built right next door. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee, closing out once more from the very noisy ninth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building. And this is where I'm told Aaron Roberts' office is going to be. So let me just clean these windows here a bit. We'll see you all next month. Uh, to answer your question, bit guy, because badges is on. That that is one hundred percent it. Me in a nutshell. Um, oof, back to the screen, and I need to change this for you two. Give me one second. Uh, um, yes, Jerry, I believe um point two is an Eva Carter at the moment. Yeah, it is. I heard that about a week ago. Yep. Um. Yeah. I don't know, how'd you guys find that ISC? I, I just I, I just wish they didn't take breaks because like they sometimes they don't do enough. Um but, well, compared to what we got in the past. I guess I should be grateful we get anything at all compared to most games, I guess. But, yeah. and, and it is a, as an older backer, it is it is frustrating because back mm. in the day there were it was literally daily updates. You had your you know, yeah. you had your Friday lunch stream where they literally just dreamed chatting during their lunch break and just engaging with the community literally just hanging mm. uh but you had your you had almost every day there was a live stream or something you had one of the shows i always used to love was um the law master's guide that was you know the bee's knees for me but i also mm -hmm. liked i liked when uh even when they did the, the shows they did the little um uh empire report episodes just to give you snippets of the news from the verse from from the actual game perspective and all of those things were really nice. And and then, you know, you'd have your your um your ten for the chairman and you'd have your your advertisements and or your you know, your ship ads. <laughs> all of those things just just flooded us with stuff. From and there was something for everyone. There was something for the coders because you had um bug smashes and you had role play stuff with the Mm. with the news report so there's stuff for everyone uh i just realized why no one's watching us because uh, um uh on on inf uh, on twitch it's twitch. Cause, yeah it's because paul's doing a captain's table special that's what it is i was like eh, there's no one on twitch but anyway yeah. oh you oh you it's, oh all, it's all good it's all do it, good. Do it, do no it. he normally he normally does it a little later so yeah, it's very interesting mm -hmm. he's doing it this yeah. time. He doesn't normally do it this time, but yeah. I, no, I think I, it's I think it's because of the guests he's got on. So who's on there? So, not to, not to, I, well, I don't mind plug and pull. So yeah, I, I cannot recall. Um, I just remember seeing on his channel they were doing a, it was kind of working it to fit the people who were on. So, um, yeah, I just can't recall. Uh, he's got Maya and a guy called Mythomatic. I have no idea who Mythomatic is, but yeah. Nope. Um. I think they were, yeah, I can't even remember the, the, the contents that Paul had, Paul had said, but um, I remember thinking, okay, cool. But you're, you're right, though, in terms of, you know, if you look at how much money they get from subscribers, which they initially said, although I notice it's missing from the website mm. now, I think, um, was going towards them keeping us updated with information. There's not a lot of it yeah. um, for, for the money that they're getting. Um, yeah. We've they are, the, you know, times. underperforming. And, yeah, we have. <laughs> and, and the quality at times doesn't seem a, as good. Uh, now, maybe that's no. just me watching and saying, well, the quality is not as good, but the production might be better in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, and yet at the other side, we're still getting crap loads of information. Mm. Um, Actually, like, I, the, I, I would argue... 
now, we probably get more information from other stuff other than ISC. Yeah. Um, so, but, so we get more. Yeah, you're right. We get more from the community mm. uh, material and videos and stuff. Like the monthly reports are so dense. Yep. Um, yes. They there's are, a there's are. a there's a there's a comedy line there, but I'm choosing here to throw it on, and I'm just going to throw it into, on, on neither. <laughs> As in dense as someone's head, Dorian. It's all right. I, yep. I, I lost. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that page is so filled with information, um, mm -hmm. and often gives snippets of what's coming even before we even see anything on the videos. Um, mm -hmm. And. and so there's so much more information and credible information as opposed to say um other shows that just give us the oops um but other games that just give us the stuff that they want to do don't, take, the... don't take this the wrong way Agar, but i had to turn you on <sighs> anyway um <sighs> dear me <laughs> you're a shocker yeah that's I'm all a... i'll say but i'm bump ching i'll be here all week yep <laughs> Yeah, I, I think <coughs> as it is, um, seventeen point two, three seventeen point two. It's put paid to all of the stuff we had at the beginning of the year. The whole "woe is me, nothing's coming to Star Citizen." It's going to be another quiet year. Navmesh, yeah, yeah. Navmesh is, is massive. huge. It is, yeah, yeah. You I know <coughs> this. Later on, this not now and not soon, but soon TM. Hmm. This is going to be what leads to um, armored convoys crossing the surface of the planet that we're going to have to go and deal with, and yeah. all sorts of stuff because it's the AI's ability to navigate the surface of the planet dynamically. So if you suddenly land a reclaimer in their path, they're not just going to drive up to it and go. I don't know Ooh. what to do because because that's my waypoint and the ship's in the way. They won't just stop. They'll recognise it. Go, Jesus! Someone's landed a ship in our way. Let's manoeuvre around it and move on. And that sounds easy because all the other games that we play, that's not hard to do on maps of that size. But if anyone's watched like Armour and the AI try to, the amount of upside down tanks I have come across in Armour is unbelievable because even on a map that's 30 kilometers squared, yeah. the AI struggle with inclines. Oh, like, let's go over this cliff. I really yeah. think the object container streaming tech <laughs> is gonna, I think, I think once people see how that's done and it works, I really expect that to become very common. Um, in other games, because like yeah. I, I was talking to someone, oh, someone in Nublitz actually, um, and he's an Ark uh, YouTuber. Yep. Uh, go check out Nublitz if you're a fan of Ark. He's a really great guy. Steve is his real name. Uh, he, um, yeah, he. Um, they, we were talking about like how object container streaming, if it was put into Ark, would totally benefit that game heaps because a lot of its problems from is it just trying to do so much in such a small space. Um, yeah. and, and, and applying that container, um, tech would remove a lot of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, I bet I've, you know, as I'm watching YouTube and other things, I see these ads, to uh, another space game mm. and what we get, what's coming for star citizen is this game, you're not ready for it, which, you know, and <laughs> this game, you know, you're not ready for it. There's so much more coming, mm. but. If you think Eve is like that, this is going to leave Eve for dead, in my opinion. You know, but oh, that's I'm what also it is. I'm also not as um, dull on Eve as I am on on uh, Star Citizen. So that's I'm, I'm showing my prejudice. <laughs> yeah. but, I was wondering why it was screen tearing. It's because I don't have G Sync on. That's what. Yeah. Um, <coughs> what I really like as well is these random points of interest: the Reclaimer crash, yep. the Colonial Outposts derelict um yep. you know and, and and left abandoned and then inhabited by some sort of group that that you know uh, is coming afterwards like the nine tails what was really yep. cool isc last week mentioned you know when it's hostile there'll be the nine tails or some other group and mm. when it's a non-hostile mission i.e go and pick this up or go and explore that or there will be another faction yep. inhabiting that derelict 
Which hey. is cool because CIG, I think, kind of understand, well, better than anyone, how expensive it is to just have random NPCs. So it's not going to be, I mean, it might be to start off with, but these are going to be factions we're going to be able to work with. And we were talking about this a little while back, I think, after the last ISC. Hmm. And it's like, this could be on Hurston, for example, it could be the Workers' Party, the people who are fighting back against Hurston Dynamics' really awful work practices. You know, yeah. they've gone to start their little rebellion, and they've, you know, they found a crash ship. We'll set up base here. Nobody knows this is here. So now, 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 now badges. I, I've, I've got to come in here and say that that's that's an unfair character, characterization of of, of Hurston Dynamics. We, we, we really care for our workers. You know, we give them food. We, we, you know, they can always buy everything they need from a company store. Now, we've, old man uh, Hurston clearly doesn't agree with you there, but you know. Well, we, we've all been to Maria Pure of Heart Hospital. Uh, we've listened to the announcements, um, and we happen to know that old man Hurston is wrong in this regard. But yes. That sort of stuff. Um, now, 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 Badgers, you've clearly been talking to Polly a little bit too much, and, and I'm sure you've been drinking a little bit too much of his Kool Aid. You, you just, just, you just need to, uh, you know, control yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I can answer that one very quickly for you, Sarachu. Uh, Sarachu in YouTube has asked, "Who are the Evocati? Uh, the Evocati are players who are exceptionally active." in identifying and helping to rectify bugs. So, for example, the inventory bug, that you open your inventory, it just loads, nothing actually happens. They, um, an example of how they would deal with that is they would go to that lots of different times, loot lots of different people, try and find if there's a pattern. Does it happen with your weapon out? Does it happen with your weapon um, stowed on your backpack? Does, Does it, it happen only happen when something... Yeah, it it, exactly and they will submit that in one of the issue councils report you can um have a look for the issue council on the rsi website it's how you raise um issues with the game that you find um if you have a look through there there can be ones that are like very similar to what you have and you add to that rather than starting your own but these people are very very active and they're very methodical in the way they do it they then get an email from cig saying we would like to invite you to join the Evocati. Um, and if they accept that, they are actually under a non-disclosure agreement. They actually are legally bound by CIG to not reveal footage or chat of what they're saying. Uh, if they do, they can lose everything up to uh, and including access to the game. I, I will say this. One of us is in Evocati. I'll let you figure out who. <laughs> Um, but you know, so um, yeah, so that's who the Evocati are. So it sounds like they just get early access to the game. They're not. They're they're incredibly methodical in the way they approach these problems over a long period of time because that's the only way you get invited. So yeah, and, it sounds like freebies. Yeah, actually, it's not. It's more like a QA job. And it really, it really is troubleshooting the issues because it's um, yeah. it 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 does. If you if you think the PU or the player test universe when it goes to open access or wider wider variety of people is um, buggy, Evercard oh, yeah. is even more buggy. <laughs> it, um, it's hell on earth. Is yeah. is Evercard. Um But yeah, so, I mean, <coughs> but the what about the, some... sorry? Go, go on. on, go on, badges. Oh no, sorry. I was gonna I was gonna move the conversation on a little bit. So. If you're still mentioning um, the Evocati and stuff, it's probably yep. worse. I, I, will, sure. I will butt in then. Um, so with with the bugs and stuff, it's it's not even like, as they go through, it's not even saying, you know, is it triggered by this or this? It might be even saying, is it triggered when I, you know, they'll go as far as saying, is it triggered if I loot this item? Um, and if, and then if they find a pattern where it seems to be that, they'll put it in and then other people will come in and double check, double test it. And so just like when you're putting bugs for any other, uh, bug that you find in game in the PU or the PTU. Um, so yeah. Um, do we want to do a couple of questions and then we'll yeah do a couple of questions. Yeah, well, we've got a couple of questions. Up. Yeah. So if you guys have questions, just uh, make sure you got questions somewhere in your question, and our bot will pick it up. You can do it in any form or fact that you wish, uh, but as long as it's got the word question there, the bot will pick it up. 
Uh, so, and when generally once we run out of questions, we'll we'll wrap it up. But generally, we have more questions than we know what to do with. So, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. Hit. Sebastian has a very first question for us. He says, "If you could rename any existing ship that's already in game, what ship would it be, and what would the name what would be the name you give it?" I'll let you take that one first. I know which one mine mine is. Unless you uh, badges, do you want to go first? Yeah. The Cutty Steel, I would bring name to the Cutty Tad. <laughs> the Cutty what, sorry? Tad. <laughs> Which is UK slang uh, for... No, no. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I yep. think it don't actually... Need, need to expand on I think, it. I think it actually yep. has to be a colour, so wouldn't it be the Cutty Brown? The, the Cutty, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the other thing. They, they, they have these conventions, and I hate it when they break the conventions. Actually, funnily enough, mine is on a convention, but Algrid, you go, because I think yours will be different from mine again. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm not really sure, like... Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, really... I'll, I'll throw you on then, Algrid. What about The Expanse? Do you think The Expanse should have a different name? Oh, yeah. The Expanse should probably have a different name. Um, it doesn't really give the image of an Expanse ship. If I was really going a refinery ship, maybe call it the... Um, mm. And I was wanting to pick up on that Expanse's idea, I'd call it the uh, Canterbury. But it's... I don't know. Um, kind of like, like they have very, um, so I look at a lot of the other, well, I guess Expanse kind of does fall under misc naming convention, but like, you know how they're very like the yeah. whole, you know, the, yeah. you the, the, the endeavor, you know, they have names like that. It's just, the Expanse just doesn't ring the same to me as they do. There's something, I'd have to sit down and really think about what I'd call it. Um, but yeah, the Expanse just a little bit too on the nose with the show um but for me personally the number one ship that breaks convention that i can't stand is the mantis and, and the reason for yeah. that is every other rsi ship is named after a constellation there is no co star constellation called the mantis so they have all these other ships like every yeah. other rsi ship works the mantis just breaks that um, yep. And at the time when it came out and we did that video, Agrid, I even said the Scorpius is free. Why haven't they used that? And obviously, the Scorpius That's was in the wings. They wanted it yeah, yeah. So, but but I still think, yeah, the Mantis is a cool name, but I don't like that it breaks conventions. So, yeah. Yep. I suppose uh, just thinking of it, the Odyssey, because the Odyssey to me has that idea, of, you know, that going in these long and. Um, oh, it's definitely going to be long trips. Are they going to um, be fun? Probably not. But uh, I, in terms of what the, the explorers do and what we expect the Odyssey to be doing, the Odyssey isn't an Odyssey ship. It's it's more, uh, mm. as we've thought, <laughs> we expect it to be more to fit more of that planetary explorer mode. And you know, and you just you just look at where where features are on the ship, the, the radar dish on the on the base of the ship, the um, the things they've said about the way in which it gathers and harvests fuel and refines the fuel. Yeah, it's going to expand the range, but you can't use it to to refuel the ships in your in your hangar or the vehicles. You've got to kind of jerry can it. And whether that means you can actually siphon fuel out of your tank with a with a hose, uh, we don't know. And so it seems that it's not really for a long trip, whereas the, the Carrick on the other hand does have that idea of being a long a ship that's done for a long trip. And the Carrick fits that name, that idea perfectly. Um, but I don't know what you'd call a, a a ship that's specific, you know, in, in times of legendary lore, a ship that does planetary survey or survey. I, I think areas. I think the Odyssey is a tip of the hand to um, 2001: Space Odyssey. I don't have a problem with the name, to be honest. Like, as an, it is technically an explorer. It is technically mm. that, so I, I don't have a problem with that name at all. Um, the ship, yeah, you and I will definitely talk about it for days. Um, but yep. for the Mantis, like, how many damn star, yep. const star constellations there are? And the other ironically funny thing is the Ares is also a star constellation, and that's from a different manufacturer. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, if I sat there for a while, I'm pretty sure we could come up with a better uh, star M constellation. Maybe the, the Mantis and the Ares needed to have their names switched, you know, so. Mm. Um, maybe. But yeah, who knows? It's a... <laughs> it's one of those questions. Now, if I have a question on the uh, subscribe now, we'll look at the armor. We've already answered that, so we'll move on. Yep. Evil uh, Dietrich has a question. He says, what's your least favorite ship and why is it the Nomad? 
Badges? Uh, badges. Chuck badges under the Psycho. bus. Chuck badges uh, under the bus! Check them under the bus! The Nomad. Uh, it's, <laughs> so, the Nomad is certainly not my least favourite ship. Um, and I, you know, I would have to, again, go back to the Cutty Steel. Um, yeah. I hate on that ship so much. I, uh, I, I would uh, tend to agree with you, sir. I think, uh, I, now I think about it, I'm trying uh, to think what would be my least favourite. Do I do, do, and then I go, is it is it the function of the ship or the value? Mm -hmm. I think it's a bit of both for that one, though. Really? I really do. Yeah, I, um, yeah. <laughs> I just think it comes into a, a really weird place in its use case. That's it. Yeah. Um, you know, because everything's got to have a... There has to be a clear reason. Why would I take a Valkyrie versus why would I take a Prowler versus why would I take a... And, and the reason I say that, that's not me making it up and deciding that CIG have to, you know, kind of conform to my... This is what CIG have said. There should always be a use case. As you know, they want beginner ships like the Aurora and the Mustang Beta to be um, just as... Possible, you know, I've, I use the, I, I've, I lose the word, but you know they should be just as um, usable, practicable ships, practical, yeah, um, yeah. as 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 any other ship that we have access to. Um, yeah. I don't know. There are some people out there doing some really terrifying things with um, auroras and that in combat. Um, yeah. they've they've found some fantastic loadouts for them and are doing some real damage. So that's CIG's own rule, uh, and I just don't see. For me, <laughs> I don't see how the steel fits in comfortably. You've yeah. got the Cutlass Black, we've got the Valkyrie with its door guns. You know, um, yeah. the 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 Cutty Steel can have as many or more people sat down than the Valkyrie potentially. Is just silly. <laughs> What about yeah. you, Algrid? What's uh, what's your least favourite? <coughs> I, I was was originally thinking I'd say yes, the Nomad is the worst ship, but uh, newsflash, um, mm -hmm. I think I'd agree with you guys. The Steel mm -hmm. is actually the worst ship in game. Mm. I think it's a, I think it's certainly the least value. Um, it loses it loses cargo for fifty million people. It's mm. like hyperbole there, but people. Uh, Exaggeration, not meant to fool. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, cut, uh, Drake ships are already overgunned to the max anyway, so they, they kind of overgun them and uh, to what they can do. And the steel is even more overgunned, so it should have even more disadvantages. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it just seems to me uh, an absolute crap ship uh, and useless yeah. ship in terms of purpose. Although I do think they did, it, it's kind of fits into that we need a we need a spawn ship for um uh theaters of war mm -hmm. and that's a bad guy spawn ship for theaters of war that's what i think it really came down to oh yeah but um oh no i don't think it's a bad guy spawn ship i think as i said i think it's the ship to get people from planet to space station because i I often wondered how they were going to force people to get off the ships. And if you basically put 18 people in a tin can, they're going to want to get off that ship really quickly. So it goes from a fight, instead of them st staying in the ship and trying to fight people on the platform, because they're in a tin can, they're going to want to get off the ship and onto the platform as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. Yeah, you see them pushing each other out <laughs> get off the ship. Yeah, pretty much. But yes, so. um, although platforms are kind of going, going the way of a dodo. Um, uh, if I understand yeah, correctly, so uh, um, you're mixing up platform with pads, but I'm talking about um, okay, okay. The, the actual fight in the um, yeah, yeah, in, 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 uh, yeah you don't uh, you don't want to be stay yeah. on the ship for the fight when you yeah they um, want they want people to be in an FPS battle on that space station essentially, so they had to yeah. design a ship to get people off it, but then to turn around and make a really bad ship and then sell it for really really high. It's just complete juxtaposition to what it was designed for. So it's yeah. kind of funny um, that they did that. Yeah, I, th I think if I was wanting to do the ground support for landing a group, I'd rather have a... I think I'd rather have a Valkyrie than than the, the Steel. Yeah, but then, um, they, then they were worried the Valkyrie was going to hang around for too long because it was too yep. armoured, so they had to... Yeah, it's just really but, funny that they even tried to sell it. But then it's even... But the Valkyrie's even got less crews, so, you know, or less, pe less ground crew. Um, and it can take a, and you could take a ground vehicle. So depending, you know, so yeah, they do have different purposes. But to me, the 
this I deal was, is I, this I've deal. Been, this whole time I've been trying to figure out why the frames are so bad and I've just realized it's because that event's on. I was, I was sitting yep. there going, why are the frames so bad? I thought it was my yep. end, but it's not my end, it's the servers. So yeah, we're getting these we're it. getting these flame yep. frame hicks and stuff, and I was like, why am I why am I getting it's, all this? It's uh nine tails. Yeah, yeah. So if you're after a nine tails event, uh now's the time to do it. Um Well that's I, I, I remember it was starting today, but I totally forgot and then I logged on and it was on, so Yep. Yeah, I, I saw when you logged on it was uh, a shutdown yeah. shutdown station. Um yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sarachi right. says Mantis is the fourth astrological sign in the Entum Zodiac, originating from the star constellation Mantis between Wasp and Butterfly. Link, can you link that to Sorry. me? Uh, can, uh, who was that from? Sarachu in you, the YouTube chat. Can you link that to me on Discord, please, bro, if you can get in contact with me? Because I looked and looked and looked and I couldn't find diddly shit. So if you've got yeah. a, a link that'll just shut me up, that, that that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, please just shoot me a link, bro, because I couldn't find anything related to star constellations in the Mantis at all. So yeah, if yeah. Uh, if you've got something that yeah that shuts me right right the hell up, yeah, please. Uh, I'd... Silent skip double zero one said, "Would badgers rather live in a cave or a bunker?" I'm assuming you mean in the game uh, bunker, please, bro. Um, the caves freak me out. He already lives in a cave um, in real life. He lives in a man cave. You know? I, I, I live in a, <coughs> I live in a muddy hole in real life. He's as, actually, as, as all, he's actually, as all good badges live. Ah, uh, uh, um, I think you yeah. say badges. I was gonna say like he's half, he's half Mister Bean, half Hobbit, and that's how you get badges. That's basically it. Well, the, the question is, you know, is it a, <laughs> is it a nasty, dirty, wet hole, or is it a Hobbit hole? And you know, so yeah, so he's a Bob. He's a Bob. a nasty, dirty, wet hole. No way. Yeah, full it's of oozy smells. <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, in a bunker, because the cave, especially, um, where you go into on the cave missions, the first room, if you go a little way into that room, there's rock fall happening, and you can hear pebbles hitting the rocks, but it's constant, and if you close your eyes, just for a moment, you can under, you can imagine it being the sound of claws scrabbling over rock. Yeah. Um, and if I stop yeah. to think about it, I tend to turn around and leave the cave at a dead sprint. So, yeah. And then you think of the um, uh, the crab that's in Pyro in their, their mine system. It's, it's a massive critter. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the uh, poop that we pick up in our caves, it's the critters that are um, not quite nice. So, yes, it's um, nav mesh will probably bring oh, the possibility of having those lovely critters come and hunt you or kill you, or eat you, which may make them even worse than those uh, SEAL Team 6 guys in, in bunkers, so, yeah, <laughs> nasty, horrible things to, to worry about. <coughs> okay, um, um, Aurelius Indomitus asks, do you think they will reveal a ship in the coming weeks? Yes, the coming weeks go all the way to the anniversary sale. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, um... Maybe if that was delayed or whatever, like, I don't know, like, we were all expecting one more ship, like, all of us were. I don't think there's any one of us that would have said, yeah, I wouldn't put money down on a new ship coming out for Alien Week, but they broke their... It's, as I said, I keep saying, their only consistency yep. is being inconsistent, so... Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, we had, I hadn't, I don't think, really bought out a ship for Alien Week in the past. No, um, they've done it every but... time. They, what's the Raelian and, and, and the, uh, oh, yeah. the... The what's the the Devaran one the the yep. Shriek and the Shrek. Talon. yeah yeah Talon that's it yep so, yeah. but they'd certainly brought out IAE we'd had you know small medium large ships so we'd had three and this time we only had two which kind of made everyone say okay and they've done alien ships occasionally that's our third ship we're going to have an alien ship or, or something in Alien Week so um so that's through us I don't I, I don't know anyone who who wasn't expecting it um and another ship so mm. yeah it's just one of those things it's yeah yeah um before <laughs> okay, we go into the blade defender hang on, yeah yeah hang, yeah, hang, yeah. On, hang on before we go to the next question i want to ask what are your guys thoughts on the wipe for 13.7.2 are you <coughs> give, do you give a shit or <laughs> oh shit astro hang on uh yeah yeah sorry re, re ask the question yeah what do you guys think about the wipe long story short other than um, never has. 
No, I mean, there was, I thought there was a question. Um, apologies for the person, because we could tie it into the same thing. I think the person who asked it didn't ask actually ask a question, but they said basically, what are you doing pre to prepare for the wipe? Um, Nothing really. I know, Shane Barrett, <laughs> he is in here. Um, yeah, how are you guys preparing for the wipe and how do you feel about it, considering they implemented the ability to target wipe certain aspects rather than everything at once? So for those that don't know, the persistent ledger now is split into three parts. Uh, money, items, which include ships, and rep. And they are wiping the first two. Yep. So your money and your items will be gone. They are trying to keep the rep. Hopefully that works um, because it stops us having to grind through all the same missions again. Um, they are also investigating whether or not they can um, compensate players who've been playing in 17.1 with yep. some money back. But <laughs> what that means, we don't know. So whether that's a proportion of what you had or whether that's just a flat amount of money, no clue. Um, but there's no details on yet on that yet. That's to come later. Um, I'm not bothered. I've just splurged a five mil on a prowler. Um, because I we're enjoying our dropship missions a lot, and I thought that's the coolest looking dropship there is. So, yeah, I'm not particularly bothered. Yeah. Um, how about yourself, X? Um, yeah, nothing. I think the only thing for me is the regrinding. So, like, I usually buy a hurricane with my first meal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, it, it's not really preparing. It's more like afterwards. I'm just, you know, oh, okay. Now I gotta go and get this again. And, oh, hey, what am I doing? Like a smart. Hang on, let me torpedo this guy. He's a hammerhead. I was wondering why you were. Uh, I didn't realize it was a hammerhead. <laughs> oh, you. You pecker. You bastards! Wasted my torpedo. Well, I'll have to do that quicker next time. There's a lot the of there's a lot of um a lot of vanguards. Uh, you don't want to shoot that guy. Oh, no, that's all good. Yeah, I, I'm remembering now why I don't like this one very much because it's just like fly heaps. One ship blows up if you're lucky, and then fly heaps again. Yep. Especially when there's a lot of people on the server, and 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 for some reason I think it lags more than Zen. Uh, mm. Let me get this right. This is this is nine tails. The other one's Xeno Threat. Yeah. So Xeno Threat. Yep. I think you get more done and it doesn't lag as much. I think that's the way I'd put it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you guys yeah. let me know too. Uh, if you, well, I don't know. Is it the same for you guys or? I tend not to do nine tails because it's just I just don't I haven't enjoyed it uh, when I've done it. So that's just that's just me. Mm. Um, it, it is cool to see that other event coming though now. That's a first person event too. So we're at least getting variety. Yeah. Yep. And, and variety is the spice of life. In terms of um, the reboot or the reset, it, it doesn't really bother me. Like, we're, we're in alpha. You want to point um, out it's... to everyone else that's watching, Algrid has every ship in the game, so it doesn't bother him because he's got them all anyway. Uh... <laughs> um, no, I don't have a steel. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, at least you got something to work towards. Um, you know, so, um, so in that sense, it doesn't bother me. But... It does, it does get rid of glitches. So at the moment, you know, you can go into uh, the area where the FPS module is going to be and you could strip everybody and you could loot food and drink and everything else and then sell that stuff off at the, at the markets, at the stalls um, and not have to worry about killing um, SEAL Team 6 or, you know, Black, Black Team 2 or whatever you want to call it. You don't have to worry about doing nine tails, and you can get, you know, oh, I've collected five heavy suits of armor from these Crusader guys. Bang, a couple of thousand credits just just in one hit. Oh, I've yeah. got twenty four units of food and twenty four drinks, so I don't have to buy drink and food anymore. Um, so having the reset gets rid of a lot of those bugs and issues as well, and and help polish those up. So. I was, you know, just because there are exploits out there you can use, I, I was expecting to see a, a wipe, and I think the more wipes we get, the better in the long run, because it just means, um, it it 
I get the idea that when they wipe it, because they're saying we have identified these problems, we're now fixing these problems, and so we're wiping to re kind of reset. So yeah, makes sense. All right, so badges. That's why I don't bother. Next question, please, badges. Okay, dokie. Okay. So, um, ta -ta -da. Uh, Riddick asks, with CIG adding a retro RSI spacesuit, will they also add the Zeus as a straight to fireball addition? So, for those that don't know, the Zeus mm. is RSI's first spacefaring ship. I, I do think that'll eventually will be a <coughs> game, but when it comes, I, I, it, for me, Algret, it feels like. Oh, a spirit origin type thing like 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 a touring ship like a, you, you you almost like a, if they ever bring in like um solar sail ships or something like that it, it, it's it, it, it's for something different to do um it feels like after release type ship to me if they bring in a zeus or the rsi zeus as the original type ship it's like bringing in the space shuttle yeah um it's like having a Model T Ford versus the Aurora. Um, so I would expect the Zeus, it might be a bigger ship, but it would be less versatile than an Aurora. Um, if they brought in a the Zeus remodeled, uh, that would be pretty cool. But do I expect to see it? Um, or would I love to see it? Yes. Do I expect to see it? No. Um, if I brought it out, would I have it in my inventory, even if it was as bad as a steel? Probably because it's got that lore and history. So, yeah. Um, one day I'll have more. I'll have more ships in my museum than Silas. I will have the Red Crab. <laughs> Bless you, Silas. Do you know, I I think I think that would be really really cool if that was something that we can have. Have the Zeus not as a flyable ship because. I mean, Jesus, like, just from a safety perspective, ah. something that old versus what we've got now. But have it as something, you know, they were talking about the Bengal is something that you will find yeah. and restore. But have this as a much smaller project of that. Oh, and yeah, then that's maybe. Cool yeah. yeah. Especially, like since it's got the, um, especially since they're bringing in those relics yeah. in, in the deep spark place, you know. You know, I, yeah. I, I've, gone and, to, and, I've gone to a weird place. You've got to do <laughs> mission delivery. Uh, meals for the McDonald's of the verse, and you get a piece Ooh. every week in your Happy Meal. <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> you, you are uh, evil. You, execute. You, can no. have this, you know, you recover it, and then maybe you can loan it to an in-game. Yeah, but what if um, they made it a limited time thing, and you've got to collect a piece of it like every week, and you and you no, can only no, do I'm it. Not even entertaining. Ah, oh, no, that'd be so no, good. No, and people no. miss out your on that one piece. Only ninety-nine. Yeah, a -A 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 yeah, and, no, and if you miss no, out on that not. piece on or that mission for the week, you've yeah. got to wait a whole year before you can get it again. Oh, that'd You're be a monster, so, that'd and be... you should be stopped. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, people would but, you know, so that that now. All of you who have been watching exhibition hall on, you know, your own private hangar, mm. so you can have people over and say, "Look, come, look, we have hey, we've got an example of the first shuttle," or, and I know. Chris Roberts isn't massive on passive incomes, but it wouldn't be anything that was considerable. But why mm. not, you know, you loan it to a, uh, you know, so somewhere in the verse. But you as a player, when people go to this in-game location, it's historic and everything else, they see the Zeus up there and blow it. Kindly loaned to the um, UEE Historical Society by Algrid, Old Ban Huston, whatever. You know, yeah, you're, instead you're, of Silas Pro, you, know, you you have yeah. you know players loaning the <laughs> to the uh, museum. Exactly um, that. I pick on Silas Crona because he is the only one who's supposed to have the uh, red crab ship from the original um, kind of um, string. So he's supposed to have every shipping game in his hangar because he's just you know he's a collector. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. But yeah, I would love to, I would love to have the Zeus in that type of thing, but. If it's a relic out in space or a wreck out in space that we could um a derelict out in space that we could uh recover you know find it haul it back um repair it um maybe have to run missions to get the parts because or yep. you know um have change yep. where you do the mission and oh uh, yes because you've done these missions for me yes i will sell you the um the, the capacity unit that 
is old and, and you know, that fits the, the zoo. And then so having to deal with some unscrupulous, unscrupulous private collector who tries to steal it from me. Yes, sends yes, some henchmen like down to... Yeah, probably Silas yeah. Croner, because he's a, he's a maggot. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I absolutely would love to see to see something like that. And I could see, given that yep. we've got derelicts in space, it would be a perfect opportunity to chuck those old or special ships in uh, for that purpose. So, yeah. All right, next question. I'm about all lawed out. Okay, so... Um... As a question. He says, Zen Strata, I think it's uh, more a question uh, for the guys if they share the worry. I worry uh, they are focusing too much on PvP content. I don't want to uh, play Call of Duty Star Citizen. So he wants so more stuff. this was than... when we were looking at yeah. um, the Siege of Orison in ISC. Yeah. Mm. Um, it is not intentionally a PvP event. Um, Actually, so I would argue... Plenty of I would argue it's a PvE event. Yeah. Because they're taking That's out all what, the AI. Yes. Um, so mm. you can still kill each other. Oh, yeah, true. Um, but... There's multiple it, platforms. I don't know that there's yeah. much of a benefit mm. for that to happen. Um, That's you know, and potentially, you know, killing other people there. Mm. From the sounds of it, you're going to have to get back into Orison, which then means you're walking around with all the security, unable to draw your weapon. Um, because you can't be picked up, you know, they said that you can't get ships in there, so yeah, how are you going to get out? In, so you're going to have to go back to Orison, so if you're killing pe killing players who are on Orison's side, just, you're basically saying... Sorry to interrupt, but here. that is one really cool thing about this event, is you get a lot of ships flying in parallel, so you don't mm -hmm. see things like this really slow freelance... Is it a freelance? No, it's a Connie. Uh, Connie. Connie, on its side. Yeah. All right, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Oh, good. Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, it was just looking at the the the, uh, uh, the Siege of Orison event where you won't be able to, you know, go and kill people as easily as you could say on um, in the night in the Xeno threat where you could you could oh, I'm going to be a Xeno threat supporter and go go screw up the the, the event for everyone else uh, because you're going to be on Orison and as Badgers was saying, you're going to need to get back and you can't get ships in. So how are you going to get back? You've got to go to Orison, which um, means the security. You. Guys, uh, it's it's lighting up in chat, and it is confirmed through the launcher. Seventeen point two is now to wave one testing. Oh, nice! So there you go. It so, is no longer in Evercarty. There we go. That's good to hear. They and so thank you very much to um, who said this down in chat. A um, couple of you guys. Uh, Axis double zero nine six said it. Um, a couple of others have said it as well. Hawk Teen, I believe you said yep. that as well. Although um, Nightbot is getting mental um... with the swear words. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not even that. No, right. he's just getting Nightbot is like like Nightbot is in <laughs> full on fight me mode at the minute. Um, uh, what did he say? Yeah. Uh, it's Wave he, one it's, BCU is out now. Yeah, it's because you capitalized your text, Hawk Teen. That's what it was. Yeah, it doesn't okay. like capitals. Yeah, it says just. Damning if you do that. No, scre you know. no screaming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I half the so that nightbot has all these settings that you, some of them you can't even change. So, yeah, yeah, but the just... teacher in me is saying it. Nightbot's telling you to use your whisper voices. Yeah. Not your it's playground indoor. voices. Your whisper voices. Indoor voice. Yeah. Indoor, yeah, indoor voice. Playground. Voices. God, man, they're, they're taking me back. How good, Jesus. Playground. Yeah, I know. Mm. Use, use your whisper voices, not your classroom voices, not your um. Mm. Not your playground voice. Yes, that's the uh, that's what the primary teachers will often say to their students. Um, so, so uh, just because I've thought of it, I'll uh, bring this mm -hmm. up, and we'll, I normally wouldn't talk about this on the stream, but uh, because the stream's here, we can also ask them what they want us to do. But my flights and accommodation is booked in for about two weeks from today, so there'll be a stream next week, but no stream the week after that because I'll be flying to Sydney. Uh, where Alga and I will meet in person for the first time. Yep. Um, we, we will be there at the Bar Citizen in Sydney yeah. at the aptly named Aurora Hotel. So we're we're, awesome. ho we're hoping to do a, a show there, hopefully, with everyone that's there. The only thing is we have to get a laptop or a computer that is powerful enough to do it. Now, Alga, I'm thinking you might have to bring your PC in because I don't know anyone up there that's got one. Um, would that yeah. be an issue? <laughs> I don't think I could get the PC in, but we we should probably get 
I can no, I can probably pay for a taxi or something to to, to bring you in with it. That's fine. Um, um. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to ask around to see if someone's got a um a yep. laptop that would work or, or be serviceable or, or good enough to. Yeah, because 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 it has to be fairly beefy. That's the the main. No, it's a Valkyrie. Man, they're never giving me hammerheads. Um, but yeah. Never. So that, that that's the biggest problem is um. <laughs> Yeah, the sad thing is, I know my I know my work laptop would be would be ideal, but it's not something I can actually take home put. or whatever. Well, it's not something I can put the extra stuff on that we'd want. So, um, all we need to do is put on OBS Studio. That's that's all yeah. that would need to go on there. But yeah, I think you'd probably be locked out with a work computer. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. So it's one of those one of those frustrations. So. But yeah. yeah, um, so we'll definitely at very least I'll probably just record something with my phone. Um, when we first meet, and then I'll, I'll put that up somewhere so you guys can see that. But yeah, I I, I, I do want to do a show, um, if we can, which will it'll probably I don't know if it'll be longer or it'll definitely be different, um, than what we normally do because we'll probably be at a bar. It might I, unfortunately I'm worried about sound. There's so many things I'm thinking about, but yeah, it'll just be a different one-off little thing. Um, yeah. but yeah, I I, I would have liked to do a show on the Friday, but I just don't think, um, yeah, I don't know how viable that's going to be. And it'll definitely be late because I'm not arriving to about 11, which is normally when we finish. So I'm basically leaving about an hour or two after we normally start. And then I'm flying to when we're about roughly when we finish. So, yeah. Yeah. And there is no inside star citizen next week, uh, in that time period. Yeah. Well, so, so it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to, well, it's not, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's the not week next after. Week, but, it's yeah. the week after next, but I get you. Yeah. Wait, wait, was that a hammer? So, wait. No, it's God damn sorry, it. Why I'm just, it? I'm just giggling because Nightbot is now kicking two people simultaneously up and down YouTube. Oh really? <laughs> Fucking uh, honestly, our Nightbot is so aggressive. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> SA, SA is rather happy that it's not picking on him this week. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we had Shane Barrett's question, which was the one about the white. Uh, oh, fine. <laughs> um, and we answered Saratu's question about who are the Evocati. <laughs> I hate these um, guys, man. I couldn't even get within 2.5. Sorry, I couldn't even get between 2.5k. <laughs> and then I fired yeah. the miss, the torpedo again, and I missed. Oh, I'm just yep. wasting torpedoes left, right, and center at this point. All right, sorry. <laughs> Don't interrupt. I'm just that being uh, frustrated. Duncan gone. Simpson, mate, you might need to rephrase your question unless anyone can decipher this. Question: Who will be joining the player over? Oh, right. I'm with you. Sorry. Um, who will be joining the player overthrow of Hurston? I think old man Hurston might have something to say about that. Come out. That, that's not a very nice question to, to raise. No one's going to be overthrown, Hurston. We're a lovely, caring people. Now, those people on um, uh, that's what, uh, Arson, where the space well is, they don't know their security. They, they having trouble all over the place. Art Corp, now, they, they really don't care about their people at all. What about uh, guns, old man? Protect, old man Hurston, what about guns? Friendly. Why can't I bring my guns to Arson? Oh, to, to Hurston. We're peace-loving people. We don't want you having nasty gun fights in our area. If me execute, you should know better. Lies. And, and, and I know that old man Hurston there just dropped his um, uh, Jimmy Stewart voice, and, and I don't know where he went. <laughs> is that where he got it got, from? He got it from that, Jimmy Stewart, right? That, that's right. Old man Hurston is my impersonation of a bad impersonation, I will say, of Jimmy Stewart. Um. So. Duncan, if the pastor is up by then, give me a shout, mate. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> um, okay, Xperia888 asks, ignoring the terrible release and price, why do you think the RSI Mantis is bad? Go oh, execute. At the time, it just didn't work. Um, and and, and it, 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 it kind of feels like a profession starter for combat, doesn't it? Um, where it's this one trick pony and it doesn't really do a lot and for the price because it was a unique combat ability they it was like it's like a 70 bucks ship at best feels like it's double the price of what it should be yep I'd agree with that my problem with it is it's oh, a unique no! ship <laughs> what did you do I accidentally fired dump fired the torpedo like a dum-dum Ooh, um, so, the Mantis is a very niche ship. 
it's got a unique task and a unique job to do. Um, but it's a ship that needs other ships with it, so you can't really lock down someone and stop them going to quantum and then deal with them because you don't have the, the armory to do that. So um, so for a single player ship, it's a, it's a, a useless ship to have. Um, uh, uh, sorry, for someone who just wants to do single player stuff for, for an org or a group, it's, a, it's an asset. Yeah. But unlike other ships where you could you could fly by yourself and do stuff by yourself or join up with others and, and do stuff, the, the Mantis really is feels like it's limited. It, it, and as it, actually it, it, said, be, overpriced. It'd be more for small little ships because like as soon as they put that on a bigger capital ship or, you know, like, and I'm just fine with saying, say they put on a Perseus, you would never take the Mantis. Just, yep. You just wouldn't. It's, it's, it's kind of a liability having that one person you'd have to babysit the whole time. Will the Mantis fit on a Polaris? In a Polaris? Yep. There you go. Oh right my god. I need a, I need a Mantis. Yep. Um, because when you think of larger ships, so one of the things that I keep talking about with the Pol with the Passus is how much I like the idea of going into a player's logistics or backline and, and just basically acting like the Tirpitz, the Bismarck, the Graf Spey of old, right? Just getting in there and smashing logistic ships left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is the time to kill on something like a Holdy or a Holly, um, trying to stop a merchantman, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. They're just going to go to Quantum. Yep. Right? So that's where the Mantis draws its strength. Okay. I um, have exactly to... as Algrid and both X said, yep. those, you know, on its own, meh. Yeah. Uh, Shadow, uh, Shadow, hang on, hang on. Shadow, Shadow Go in chat said it does have a sexy cockpit, and I do agree, but that's all it's got. Yeah. That's all it's got. Absolutely. And it, and it, it, and it does look like one of the yeah. ships from Star Trek or whatever, so yeah, I can agree with all that. But the, <coughs> the other thing you could consider doing with it is putting it on the deck of the Polaris and firing it up. Yep. Yeah, typical. So I don't get the so, payment. Yep. I don't get the payment now for that mission because I died just as I was about as the payment's about to roll out. <laughs> so seal it inside the Polaris. <laughs> yeah. And then fire up its quantum interdiction device and stop stuff from escaping. Yep. Well, that's not even more than stopping stuff escaping. That's pulling it out of our quantum. Technically, you yeah, but uh, you could also you prevent them to going back to quantum. You could, also, if you're you could also chuck it in an Odyssey or something like that too. Yep. But if exactly. you're looking the at the center of um, an interest, yep. if you're looking at just being able to do the uh, stop them going into into uh, quantum, why would you take a, a mantis when you could take a cutlass blue? Mm. Um, um, <coughs> so, uh, stink figure, um, not true. The blue has one as well. Um, yeah, but it's, so it can't it but, can't interdict, yeah. and it dampens. That's right. Yeah, I was going to so say, it's not... Jumping. Um, yeah, it's not quite yeah. the same, but it's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I um, said, if, if you're not if you're not pulling them out of quantum, but you're trying to stop them going into quantum, why have a Mantis with the Polaris when you when a, a Blue would probably be better because it's better armoured as well? And well, better armoured. And I'd also argue um, it's not the pulling out people out, it's the stopping people from leaving that's probably more yeah, powerful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, and the, and the, other, the other issue... Um, as of course that the mantis won't actually work from inside ships uh, thanks to can for confirming that but they have stated already the mantis will need to be outside of another ship on on its own or you know as in not in a ship to work um so yeah um <coughs> we may well get other ships capable of doing that you'd certainly think some of the larger capital ships would certainly combat versions would certainly want something like that with that ability um but yeah, I think, like I said, if you're going to do the sort of work that I'm going to do um, with the Passius, a Mantis is going to be a pretty useful partner. If I'm going to go into the back line and try and take on Hull Ds and Hull Es, obviously in a straight-up combat, the Passius is winning that. That's not hard. The problem is how reliably and how quickly can I damage their quantum drives to stop them going to quantum. And if you're attacking a group of them, you're maybe getting one or two. Whereas, actually, all I've got to do is knock a couple of thrusters off some ships with a Mantis in tow. 
Um, and then, you know, then they're all at my leisure. I can destroy them at will with a pass system. Yep. So I, I don't think that the Mantis is um, as weak, or sorry, as, as a bad a choice. In terms of cost, uh, you know me, I don't like talking about cost in games. Mm. It, you know, if you can afford it, you can afford it. If you can't, you can't. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's more to it. I just think at the moment... Yep. It's it's not seeing its full potential at all, yeah. um, and yes, you wouldn't ever want to take it on its own as a combat ship. Yeah, you there are far better combat ships. choices. Yes. Um, yeah. Can can you do me a favor? If Gutro <laughs> drops in one of the voice chats, can you drag me, drag him in? Um. Yeah, Gutro's going to come uh, carry gun with me. Oh man, I got messages from Antoya. Looks like the moment. Yeah, they did. Thanks, mate. They they did. Uh so hey. so so one thing that I was just going to just sorry, what's going on with Antoya? Uh, real quick. Something that really weirdly happens on a lot of the discords is we get all these people trying to get into our discord communities and spread things like cryptocurrency, NFTs, and all this shit. And so I get, like, if I'm on a server and I'm mostly a lot of stars and servers, they'll message me and go, hey, do you want to buy some things? And I literally just contact the the leader of that. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks, bro. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Fuck off. Um, yeah. And yeah, so basically, <laughs> oh, now he comes back. Um, Dude, I'm on a live stream. Go away, dude. I'm on a live stream. Stop shooting me in the face. Stop it! Um, That's showing you love. Yeah, so, yeah, long story short, contacted Montea. They they ban the people, Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, then it stops from spreading, and that way you guys don't get um, scammed or spammed or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. Yep. Um, He's wasting his ammo. Man, to get a new batch is going to cost him a couple of UEC. I got a message from SA Laughmo Nightbite just put me in timeout. Such a dirty boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's messaging me as well about <laughs> completely different things, but he's still being a very dirty boy. Um, Montoya yeah. so, just Montoya just replied, anyway. "Not sure why you don't want to buy these amazing NFT collections." And we go, "Yeah, I've got I've um, got plenty." Moving of- swiftly on then. Um, so that's the Mantis. Um, I think we all agree that it's used in conjunction with other ships, um, and I, I'm certainly seeing a use for it later on. I yep. think. Um, oh, it's definitely got a use. It's just yeah. not a solo I, use ship. I think yeah. it's going to be something you'll have on backup in fleets for fleet combat. Because if it turns out that you're winning, you're you probably going to have it run sealed away. up somewhere. <laughs> exactly. So you, you then you pop the you know you pop them out of the Polaris. It puts its quantum um, not enforcement the one that stops people jumping away and you can finish the destruction of that fleet okie dokie uh so thanks xperia for that question axis 0096 asks do you expect pyro and nyx to be more complete when they release than stanton (coughs) um yes from me Uh, and the reason for that is i think server meshing is holding stuff up so i think they can't help but advance with Pyro, and because they're advancing with Pyro, it means they'll also be further on with Nyx, um, because they're waiting for server meshing to work, yep. um, and that work on the art and everything else is going on outside of that. So yes, I would expect a lot of Pyro. Mm. Um, Gacho, are you there, man? Ready. Uh, I sure am. <laughs> right, just, re- just remember, Gacho, we're live, so on your best mm. mind, if you please, sir. Right. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. And the other thing to to take into account with um, when you're considering um, Pyro and Nyx versus Stanton, Pyro mm. and Nyx are also building on the things they've learnt from Stanton. Mm. So it's mm. it's not just oh we've got to work out you know work out how we do it. I mean, they have it doing it now. It's just putting in the in the artwork and styles that are unique to that place. Mm. So yeah, I fully expect it to be to have a better feel and, and smoothness and, and rest of it that goes with it. So yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Who is that other guy that Come wanted on. to join us? Is that true? Real quick. Sorry to interrupt boys. Um yeah. uh, shish. I can't even remember. Uh, How do you scroll uh, up? Spruik AU Spruik, yeah. is um looks like he's willing to join you as well. Oh yeah, he wants to grab a fighter though. I'm not interested in that. I'm looking for... How do you scroll back up in chat? I've forgotten. I know it was a key. I just can't remember which key. Um, I've never really found it. Oh, damn, I thought it was... Um, from your mobile glass. 
Yeah, I usually do it from the movie class if I want to if I want to go back, but yeah. Uh, how? How do I? How do I scroll? Uh, don't know. Yeah, can't recall. Mm, mm. Um. Anyway, moving on. Next question. Okay, okay. Moon Dog Monty. Um, said a discussion was had on the Astro Pub's most recent captain's table about the possible exploit of salvaging your own ships just to reclaim them after and repeat the process. Uh, yeah, they'll have a mechanism to stop that. Come on, seriously. And if I don't, and if I don't stop it, there'll be a wipe at which point, in which if I do kind yeah. of put in a stop to it. So yeah, come on, seriously, yeah. seriously, like seriously, really? Are we at that point now? We're going to go. Hey, you're that dumb CIG. Yep. <laughs> Come on, like, give me the credit where credit's due. Come on, like, I'm going to call you on that. Come on, seriously. Yes, I, I, I think, you know, we're going to see a massive expansion on the insurance side of things yeah. for both ships and us, right? So I think yeah. the higher grade insurance you go for, the more times your clone will be able to be used until you've got to, you know, effectively die and then hand yeah. over to your air. I, I, um, and I, I think it's likely to stop this whole... I don't want to die, I'm just going to self-destruct. I have a feeling self-destructing will void your insurance to an extent, I, I actually, which is, it's going to cost a lot more to get it back. You know how when you kind of break the law in real life with something like that? So if you reclaimed your own ship and then claimed it, they would like go, uh, you've just eaten your own ship, or there's some, or, or somehow they find out, like, right, the, obviously some, like, obviously there's a, that could be a yeah. legitimate criminal thing, but if they ever can track it back to you, like like it sets off yes. a red flag in some computer system, like, hey, this guy, we found the serial number on this ship, and it's the same as this guy's ship, and he consumed his own ship. Oh, and he's done it half that, a dozen yeah. times. Yeah, and then it punishes well, you by putting up your insurance premiums. Yes, and it, it, it's know? already listed as a crime in yeah. uh, the UEE and most of the other jurisdictions. Insurance fraud is listed as a felony. You guys, you guys forget that early. Uh, uh, clearly, I, I think you're forgetting that early on when they talked about the insurance, they said if you commit insurance fraud, you could void your insurance. Period. There you go. So you have an LTI ship and you void insurance on your. You know you you uh, commit insurance fraud, fraud with that ship. They did actually. I remember that now. Yeah. You know, they will void it. Yeah, you could actually so, lose LTI. I remember that. Yeah. So that's so, a pretty harsh punishment. So do do insurance fraud at your um, own peril. Own peril. You know. So yeah. Mm. But I, I've got to ask too. Like seriously, like when people ask some of these questions, I. I I know they're trying to stimulate debate, but I am now starting to question, like, after all this time, uh, you're almost insulting CI intelligence, intelligence and your own when you ask questions like that. I, yep. I just gotta, I gotta put that out there. Like, just think about it for a second and you'll be able and, to answer it yourself. And the other thing is we're in alpha. Yeah. So, if, yes. you do, we do this stuff now and so, okay, you know, part of it is CIJ yeah. saying, what are you guys gonna do? Yeah, but also we've got to remember, guys, that we've been part of this since the beginning. There are going to be yeah. people coming and asking these questions who yeah. have only had a few months exposure yeah. to CIG. I, 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 um, and, and I think I think that's <clears throat> that's where I'm at. I think I've just got to remember yeah. that um, there are new people coming in. So yeah, that's yeah. maybe maybe a bit on me. But like, I still, I, I I don't know. Like, if you've come up with it in five seconds, how much further along yeah. they are when they've been working on this shit for you know. However long they've been working on that, they would have thought of that, you know. But then, yeah. even in in terms of that, you know, we've been we've been following the game for for donkeys, and yet, yeah, you know, we we forget yeah. stuff. So you know, you'd forgotten about the I'd forgotten the, about what it. they'd said about yeah. the had... insurance fraud it's penalties. Come, come on, um, ten, ten years, mate. Ten years. Ten years. You know, so you it's know, natural. So, yeah. You know, so we'll remember some things and and other stuff. So what's a new person into the who's you know, yeah. two or three years in yeah. and heard that. all they will have been fed is the constant diet of oh look it's six months shouldn't we release an article or a video bashing mm -hmm. star citizen again yeah um so you know they're going to be fed a constant diet of that as well um yeah yep. i will say yeah. that does feel like it's starting to wane though and i don't mean wane as in we're sick of it i mean as in it, it legitimately starts to feel like the tide is turning you know, like, yeah, especially well, with a couple of the big uh, YouTubers in the last month, few months. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I well, got you. I want to play the game. I think that, I think they're they're running yep. out of things to bag just because it is 
Yeah. Hang on. Uh, gotcha. How far away are you, man? I'm at uh, Grim Hex, so I'm in route right now. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I could. Continue. I was that was a groan of. of well, of yeah. I'm gonna sit here and wait <laughs> for this slack ass. That's right. <laughs> Just play the lift music while you're waiting. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. I. I I can understand the, the questions coming up. I know for some of us, for the older backers, sometimes we're going, why are you asking such a stupid question? Um, and we, we just forget. You know, we forget mm -hmm. that... Yeah, everything's a matter we've of... We've been here so long and someone could be brand new and, and for them it's a, a yeah. totally... Everything's a matter of perspective, is what I'm trying to yes. say. And, 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 and I, I, like, I, like to, 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 so now I kind of, kind of, mocked that person and kind of said, why didn't you think about it? To go the other way, it's sometimes very hard for me and Algren, and I think Badgers would agree this to do, to literally kind of clean the slate and go, what is the perspective of this new player? And that can be really hard to do. Like, especially, like, I had to do that recently with the, um, the CCU videos. Like, like to me, it's so levelly basic that yeah. what is a CCU? And then when I started thinking about it, I was going through... And thinking about it, it's like, why the hell is it called a CCU? What the hell is a CCU? Why is it called a CCU? And then I went through the website and tried to put it on. Yeah, yeah, but then they contradict themselves because yep. they also call it a ship upgrade, an yep. upgrade. Um, so, so even with their own system, they realize it's a stupid thing to call it a CCU. Yeah. Um, and that's when I realized, no, it's not stupid to do a video on this because... Um, yeah, I, there's, a, there's a video, I'd, if you ever want to kind of see the new player experience, I, I did link it, that video I linked in uh, our yep. ch channel. Uh, this one here, I'm going to link it in chat because I think it is worth... It is worth, it's worth looking at. Yeah, it's, um, wor it's worth looking at. Just just the first, I think it's first for three or four minutes. So this guy is a gentleman by the name of JV. He's actually, uh, I, I don't quite remember his YouTube channel count, but he's fairly large. Yep. Um, mm. and, and just the... The shit he goes through from buying a ship to learning how to fly and all that shit. And I was like, yeah, they need to yeah. overhaul this shit like crazy. Yeah, well, um, how, how do I find where to buy a ship? How do I, okay, yeah. I've got my ship. Now, where is my ship? Oh, oh, crap, where have I, mm -hmm. I, I, I spawned? You guys are getting a shout out in chat from Starlet, by the way. Oh, hey, Starlet. How you doing? Yeah, we're both well. Except for Aragrid, well, look at him, he's... Yeah, yeah look at Aragrid, what, what can you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm old. Get, get used we to can't say Aragrid, I don't think, because... Yeah. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't keep saying I'm old, I'm, I'm older, but not old. Yes. I'll just uh, call him, I'll just refer to him as Lacutus from now on. Yeah, yeah. Rude. Yeah, I know. Okay. Resistance is from um, That's right, resistance so, is from uh, Drew Bianchi asks, whatever happened? To the leak locations like New Austin. I remember that there were leaks years back during Grey Box of places like New Austin, on Terra, etc. So you got to ask um, Mr. Lando. So that that all came down because Lando had a computer screen, I believe it was in the background, with an IP on it uh, to an FTP server that had no password on it. And so basically people got into that FTP just for being on the screen. And yep. and so now every time everything goes out, they double check the backgrounds of everything, um, and that also <clears> happened <throat> on a few other things like uh, whiteboards. Um, yep. We we found out a whole bunch of ships one year, didn't we, Agri? Uh, like all the ships from the year were on a whiteboard in the background. And, and so people we, zoomed in on the whiteboard and went, okay, da 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 da. da. Yep, and um, and worked it all out. They they've now realised how savvy we all are, and they uh, they don't do that anymore. Okay. And if there is anything in the background, you say, why is it there? Are they, are they toying with us? Is it stuff they've actually got on? Are they wanting to, mm -hmm. to self-leak it? Um, hey, so, Gut yeah. hey, Gutcho, how do you feel about doing the hurricane instead? Because it's just the two of us and you can fly and that way I can be sure. full lazy mode and actually ask some questions. <laughs> you got it. All right. I'll wait till you get here. I'm here. Okie dokie. Um... So Zen Strata says, which ship are you most disappointed with? And do you think CIG will eventually fix it? X, do you want to hit this one first? Uh, yeah, I, look, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm not happy with where, where the Redeemer is at the moment because they've balanced it around the game for now. But I understand it. And I still enjoy the Redeemer. But yeah, I do think they're going to fix it. I think all ships, and, and we've said this so many times, Eric, don't we? like, it's gonna, everything's going to change before release. Everything. Like, just, just nothing is final at the moment no, nothing's yeah, so. going to be flying as it does at the moment yeah. nothing's going to be 
yeah. shooting as it does at the moment, that'll all get balanced and rebalanced yeah. and balanced and, again. And then five years after that'll be different again. You know, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like a year after that'll be different again. What, whatever. They're just going to, as I've said, the game's never going to really end. It's just going to constantly evolve. And so one day yes. this ship will be the meta and, you know, um, you know, look at League or Legends or any of the MOBAs or even any MMOs or whatever. They're constantly changing. Like you look at World of Warcraft and, you know, one year the Druid's the, the best tank and then the next year it's the, the Death Knight or whatever. And then, and then they, yeah. after that you've got to redo the whole character. and you know. So I can imagine it'll be yeah. time, you know, even components on ships. X will be one and then your patch will come and you'll go yep. back. Quantum Drive is no longer the best one because I'm running out of fuel too quick. This is the best one because I can actually get further. Yeah. And, and I, th I think the other thing is they're also trying to give you as many reasons as possible for there not to be a meta. So even yep. take things into account, if you're going to a certain section of space, um, that might affect different components different ways. So even, mm. in you know, like in Stanton, this is the best component on this particular ship because of this. <laughs> but then as soon as you go into Pyro... It flips because yep. of X reasons. Because, yeah. because of the size of Stanton, you yeah. you might want that one that is slower that can go a lot further. So you know, so yeah. it's, it's lots more choices to Welcome to consider. To the um, retrieval system. So yeah, and and I think yeah, I I, I think I'd agree. Oh, there, there are lots of ships you'd like to see improve, but it really is just. <laughs> Which one, speak, which one stands out for you, Algrid? Is there a particular one that stands out? Probably uh, uh, the Phoenix. Because the Phoenix, the Phoenix is kind of just cobbled the, the, the medical, the, the luxury section into the ship. Um, actually, the, the Connie line in particular, like I think of the Aquila, where the Phoenix has got the wider, the wider midsection so it can actually take uh the ursa rover comfortably mm -hmm. and have the doors all open but the phoenix doesn't come with the ursa rover it comes with a lynx the uh aquila comes with an ursa rover and yet it's still got the narrow the always, narrow uh hole so i always kind of forget that too like like when they more recently announced there's a hundred vehicles coming that's kind of scary. Yeah. Like, and and that also means like all the vehicles that we currently have, they drop out of those two hundred ship lineup now. So yeah. you know when we were working that out a couple of weeks ago, like the last bunch of ships, that numbers jumped badges. Yeah. Because they've now removed all those vehicles, so now there's more rooms for more ships. You know, so how many vehicles have we got right now? What? Twenty maybe. If, I don't you, know, if you count the if you count the variants of the vehicles, well, probably yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the point I'm trying to make is like that's just jumped again. So there's now room for twenty more actual ships. Um, but then then I get into things like the Dragonfly, is that because the Dragonfly works in space, so does, is it technically a ship and a vehicle? So there's some room there for interpretation. We'll have to wait and see on. Oh, yep, and it begins. My yep. camera is Your going to shit. Okay. Um, I'd have to go for the Cuddy Red, I think. Um, I think it went from, mm. you know, must-have ship when you were doing uh, PvE or PvP to meh, nothing. Um, <coughs> it'll be nice to see them do something around the search and rescue element, so not just the stabilising people on the bed, yeah. but, you know, <coughs> giving it some advantage when it comes to finding people maybe that searchlight inside doubles as a an ability to locate where survivors are in a wreck so you can get to them more quickly just something basic like that would be good but yeah um yeah. i feel bad for the cutty red it went from kind of really important to yeah. meh so quickly it was it was not good <laughs> and i know okay. that they wanted to do that but i could i given that Really, you know, it went. You've got Cuddy Red, G uh, G Carrick. Hang on, hang on. Gacho, pad one on the station. <laughs> you got it. I'm on the way. If you're currently in ships with the med bay, you got the Cuddy Red, a Carrick, and a not and a um, eight ninety. Mm. And the eight ninety and the Carrick are the only ones that can offer the spawn of the, the spawn option. Given there's so yeah. few ships currently that have that, even though we know the Cuddy Red is not going to be have the spawn option because it's below to your bed 
there is still ground where it, it it probably could have or should have retained that. Um, so, yeah, just to, just to give it that more versatility in in missions and and bunker missions and other stuff. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I could see that being having being a ship, but it's disappointing at the moment in it in its level. Mm. Next question. Yeah. <coughs> Um, okay, um, Namek asked, how would you like a standalone MISC ship or an Endeavour colonization module to be called the Odyssey? There is a MISC ship called the Odyssey, I guess I don't get. Mm. <coughs> I suppose you mean something in line, more in line with what Algrib was talking about earlier, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have... No thoughts on it. I'm I'm quite content with the Odyssey, but go I'm, I'm in the minority. Could it go anywhere? I go to. Right there, Machinus. Oh, sorry. Namek said, "Yeah, talking about changing the name, so maybe yeah. making that more the name um, for um, an, an Endeavour colonization module or another ship." Yeah. yeah. Oh, what the? F I think we kind of. What the fuck? There's no guns on the ship. <laughs> no. Look, what the fuck? We have hey, to go back. No, that, that's, that's, that is so that you can, uh, you know, play the game and engage what in chat without fuck? being distracted. What the fuck? Um, just while we deal with the um, slight mishap that's going on on screen oh. at the minute, uh, Moondog Monty, I can add, I can answer this. He says, uh, "Are all items being wiped? My inventory is disgusting, and the selling UI is poo." Um, Yes, all items are being wiped. Don't worry with the selling UI, um, UI because so is your money. Yeah. So uh, pff, don't don't sweat it, dude. Don't stress yourself. Um, but yeah. Uh, Nemec says, can you guys please read more questions? Access 0096 says, please read more questions. Um, and Dog says, let's do 10 questions in 10 minutes. So let's go. <laughs> We're just, okay. we just we just do it at our own pace, guys, and obviously we go off on tangents and stuff like that. This is a, like like this is the one one thing that I think any of you that have watched this for a long period of time knows that this is a discussion. This is not we, we do not do this in, in a format that is formal. It is just yeah. it, it comes as it comes, and um, th that's what I like about this. I'm just hanging out with some mates chatting, and if one of you are here in here with us, we'd be doing exactly the same thing. And I apologise in advance, or oh, I apologise profusely for my choking to death on screen. Screen. I am trying mm. to stop it. I'm just coming out of the back end of some Rona. So, uh, yeah. yes. Um, yeah. And I do feel like I've come out the back end of Rona as well. Um, doing that. So, um, given that the Misk Razor does not seem to have a max in Constellation, does it make it the least likable Misk ship? What was the ship again? Sorry, I missed the ship. What the is Razor. Razor. I don't know. Maybe the razor has um, a constellation. I, I really I, don't know enough about constellations. I, I always forget the name of the razor, but the black one, the stealth yeah. one, that is the best one to me. But again, if you're a racing person, then it might be a really good ship. And let's be honest, I think I would say racing's a niche, unless you guys think differently. But I mm -hmm. think I think it's it's going to cater to certain type of people that like that competitive flying. Um, like you know, mm -hmm. you know, those people that do a lot of low level flying and stuff like that. It, they're the type of people I think that will. Um, that like that type of ship yeah yeah um home springs homestead sorry honey springs homestead i do apologize there's what standalone ship to buy if i own a constellation andromeda starter package your recommendations please thank you um i'm gonna get in there with my two pen earth before anyone else does <laughs> um ask to borrow everything Mm -hmm. um, and then ISC, um, uh, the IAE, sorry, the um, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, which is going to happen November, December time this year. Um, most, if not everything that is flyable, will become flyable for you. You can rent them all out for free. You just yeah. go to the expo, go, I like that one, rent. I like that one, rent. Fly them all um, and have a go, mate, because that is such an open-ended question. Yep. What is it you want to do in game? What do you feel like you can't do now? Um, you know, and, and have a muck around. And if you want to come in and talk to these guys about um, what you can do with store credit, because the nice thing is, is, you know, up to a certain value with your ship, 
you can try everything up to that value because you just melt it. I'm going to try this ship now. Melt it again. And effectively, what you can do is turn your ship into store credit. Yep. Um, pick up a ship that's available. Try it and go. You have to try it for 24 hours once you've picked it up. Sorry, sorry. You, what, what, what ship does he have? Um, the Andromeda. Chronic Andromeda. Yeah, the other thing is during the anniversary sale on Invictus, you can rent every ship too, so you don't even have to melt and stuff. That's just what Badgers have said. But oh, sorry. I, 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 sorry, I heard him saying melt, so yeah. Yep. Yes, what, no, so, what, but, but what, so what, what I'm meaning is between now and then, so he doesn't have to wait yeah, till November. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what, does he, you know, what does he want to do in-game? That's what it always doesn't say. Th th this is, yeah, just, this is what, this what we're saying, so I'm... Handling. I'm I'm heading that off at the pass in that because it is such an open ended question because it depends on what you want to do and you yeah, know what do you fit the it, gaps you feel like you have in your fleet. Yeah, um, yeah without knowing what you want to do, that yeah. that uh, uh, and, and it's not even I want to make this sorry, ship. Sorry, it. sorry, was it the Andromeda or the Aquila? It is Andromeda. Andromeda. Yeah, so so that's a that's probably the most generalized ship in the entire game. Right, so and that's, and that's a great yeah. partnership yeah. to have, and it's not it saying do what do I need to melt. It's what standalone ship, sh as I understand that question. What standalone ship should I get to accompany my Andromeda? Um, mm -hmm. And as, as Badger said, that's a really open-ended question. That's tied into what you want to do in game, uh, how many people you intend to play with, what things you you know. It, it... But the Andromeda is a great a great ship. Um, You've got the P-52 with it. It's It's got some great pilot, pilot, uh, pilot weapons. Um, it has a good amount of cargo. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good ship. It was my very first ship when I, when I, when I started. Mm -hmm. Next. Okie dokie. Um, so, um, Aurelius Indomitus asks, Algrid, why do you have all of the ships but you say with my fix, my fleet, nothing under the reclaimer. I'd have to go back and have a look at the. Um, I think I think part of uh, it very quickly, Algrid, is that uh, we teach people based on the mistakes we've made too. Yeah. Yeah. So normally on on fix my fleet, we'd say these ships don't aren't, aren't bang for buck. Um, the easiest way is I'm a collector, and so. Um, Part of my original backing was I'm a collector. I want to I want to get them, but also I want to support the game and support the development. Um, and that meant that I bought packs that had the ships. Um, and that's probably really the the nuts and bolts of it. But... That's really aggravating. We just we missed the entire event. The event's over now. <laughs> so annoying. And then my ship that had guns now has no guns. So yeah. All right, um, we'll head back up to the hags and we'll get, uh, we'll get in the reclaimer so and get I, out of here. So I do think we've answered that question. So next question is from Moondog Monty, and he says, these boys are on, like, question 8 of 100. Actually, we're close to the end. You guys yeah. are slacking. More questions, yeah. please. Yeah, you guys, um, you guys are slacking because we're, we're almost at the end, so... Yeah. Um, get with the program. <laughs> Shadow Girl asks, when you two meet in person at the bar... Will execute Rod Algorid's head on behalf of the rest of us. Sure, why not? I, we want it on. We want if it on video. Kick, though. If we he's kicking that. and screaming, though, it's not my fault because you asked for it. Oh, I yeah. think if they want that to happen, I think if they want to happen, they, they you know they should um, ante up, uh, help help support the um, the channel and uh, giveaways that we could we could do or maybe replace we should... our equipment that's broken. Yeah, maybe if we get a certain wow. number of likes or something on the, yep. the, the live the week likes. before or some, yeah, we'll we'll do that. I don't know, we'll, we'll work out something. We'll, we'll work out something. A tit yeah. for tat. Uh, what do you call it? The, a, we'll do it you like guys, a, you guys want. You guys want me embarrassed in public? Yeah. Um, anti up. That, that's my that's my response. So. Fair enough. Maybe yes, and you might up. say being on live stream, you are in public. But yes. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where to go with this other than somewhere else. Uh, Benjamin <laughs> Hanna says, um, um, <laughs> I've been wondering about the usefulness of the hammerhead. If you were protecting a cargo run, for example, would you rather have a hammerhead or seven single-seater fighters? I personally, uh, yeah, it depends on so many factors there. Um, what are the other ships you're again, how far out you are, stuff like that. Um, I will say that, generally speaking, we're not a big fan of the Hammerhead because of its crew requirements. I think that's its, yeah. uh, you know, if, 
And at the moment, yeah. it it's range is less than fighters. So you well, take out a hammerhead and the fighters can outrange you. So, so, so at the, the point. The other thing is at the moment, two redeemers that you're going to have with six people outguns one hammerhead. So yep. that, 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 that kind of... But, and, but, and has greater range than the hammerhead. So Yeah. And if you lose one, you've still got the other. So, um, but like everything, uh, I do think there will be, what the hell? Have you got a, oh, you walked into me, but you've killed me. <sighs> Damn Americans in their lag. Have you got a med kit? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm dead then. Because yeah, you, you, if you walk into me and there's lag, it kills us. Damn Sorry. Americans. Can I'll you be, get to the I'll med bay? No, nope. I'll, just, I'll just kill myself and walk back down. <laughs> oh, chopped off the head with the door. Oh. So what you just experienced there, I'm kind of glad I grabbed that on stream, actually, is um, if you're playing on a server, um, for some reason, when you're playing with Americans or Europeans and they walk into Australians, they just kill us. I haven't, find most haven't people all do that. The time. So, yeah. No, no, no. It, it's whoever's got the, the better ping uh, kills the other one. So, yeah, it happens quite a so, bit. So, yeah. So, it's always, you know, don't rush. Yeah. Don't run into people because you will kill them. Yeah. So, yes. That'll, dis um, that's, that'll hopefully disappear in time. But eventually, like, yeah. Yeah, it should not be doing damage when you're inside another person. Like, I, it, 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 they need to look at that code. But, again, it's not super important at the moment, but down the track, yeah. <laughs> Um, Sorry. It's yeah, more an annoyance think, than anything else at the moment, isn't it? Um, I'd be tempted towards the hammerhead um, for time to kill for a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, range being the key one. Because like, yep. if you're protecting a cargo run, that's a pretty short cargo run. You probably wouldn't need several, seven single-seater fighters. The other thing um, we haven't brought into this argument, Badgers, is, is uh, price. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so when you look at price, again, I instantly go to other ships for the same price. What pad were we on, um, Gacho? What was the number? Uh, your ship despawned, I think. Yeah, it usually despawns when you die. Welcome um, to the and no one's on it. So, yeah. Next. Vehicle selected. Stand by. Yeah, read. Uh, next one from SA. Um, well, you can skip that one. Pad 9. No, I'm yep, joking. Fair enough. No, yeah, no, it's I'm just joking. more hate for the steel. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, so Zen Strata says, is there anything in the roadmap for streamlining and simplifying in-game controls? I Not as far as I'm aware, I, and I think yeah, it's going to get worse. Th that'd, that'd be way further along, um, mm. and it's never going to happen mm. because you almost want to actually have more complicated controls because the more controls you have, the more accessible it is to more people. Yep. Um, and, and that 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 type of question that that person just asked, I almost wonder if that person came from consoles, because console people's are used to go like the developers make the controls and they go here you go, where PC is more like here you can do whatever you want, you can customize it. Um, yeah. So, so so yeah, you want it flexible because like I can think of a myriad of reasons. Let, let, let's just an extreme example. What if I'm disabled and I've only got one arm? You know. Yep. So um, and that's an extreme example. But like uh, even within just us, us like like people I play with, like I, I know people that love having C as the duck key, but then you get people that are FPS gamers and they're like, no, you got to have it on control because otherwise you can't press D and C at the same time. And yeah, so uh, and there are people who who do play Star Citizen who are um, you know, physically handicapped who do have a missing an arm or do have yeah. um, uh, you know issues with mobility or other stuff so joysticks. you want that diversity of choice, um for players and it's something chris roberts has always wanted as well yeah. he wanted as jo many options joysticks and controls. keyboards at the same time too yep um mm -hmm. gacho where are you man i'm waiting at the terminals where are yeah, you pad nine i told you pad nine where is it? i'm ready to go um so yeah and i think you know one of the things they are going to move they're good they've said uh, uh numerous times they're going to do and there's no indication they've changed this is the cockpits are going to be more physicalized mm. so whereas at the moment you can go kind of flight ready <laughs> open and close the exterior 
spool your quantum drive you'll notice that a couple ships have more slightly more options in that vein everything's going to be so so, so just able to, give to me do a, within the cockpit so just to give yeah. an example of how i like, i did i did flight ready then instead of that just mm -hmm. turning on my character will lean over and actually flick the switch is essentially what yeah, it, yeah. Uh, to add to what Baker's yeah. is saying there and close the door much please like Got, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Close the door anyway. M much like those for DCS, that the, the are familiar with flight sims like DCS, everything in DCS, <laughs> if you're on the more complicated flight models, is done in the cockpit with yeah. your mouse clicking on and and set, setting various settings. So your whole pre-flight routine um, can be set up within the cockpit. For those that don't want that, they just do what X did, which is press R, flight ready. Yeah. Mm. So I think for those that really like that immersion of sitting in the cockpit mm. and thinking particularly forward to, you know, they've stopped adding support for it at the moment, but it will be re-added. VR much further down yeah. the line, being able to look around your cockpit and actually switch stuff on. That's going to be cool, right? So yeah. <laughs> I like the idea. one of the things I like the idea of is if you're doing it piecemeal, <laughs> is at the moment, if I turn the engines on just by, you know, going, the buttons and sometimes i do that but what we'll see is as execute said when you click that power on button you'll you'll reach over and click that switch and so there are aspects i really do like and i i'm, I'm personally looking forward to yeah. but will i do that all the time hell no sometimes i just get on oh, i just want to get get going it's just uh um it's good to have multiple options for things because like the other way i'd look at it is like you know you got windows how there are multiple things in in windows 10 that yep. you can do with different you can do it with a key command you can do it with a mouse command you can do it with a, you know multiple different ways you can do things and it's the same thing the more options you have it to do it your own way the more people it accommodates um yep. yeah i think it's a good thing not a bad thing yeah yep so the next question from limited response giving you a little bit of a break badges uh do you think the bmm can recover and my response to that question is can recover from what yeah. Um, yeah, I, so. I, I think it's uh, yeah, yeah. It did, it did recover quite nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, what have you been watching the last few weeks, sir? Yeah. <laughs> and whatever drugs um, you're on, I don't want any. Uh, <laughs> so I know a lot. Oh, no, I know a lot of early backers will say, "Well, it's no longer a clipper ship." It was oh, never yeah. a clipper ship because if you look at the idea of what a clipper ship is in in our in our history, they were unarmed. But the, the BMM was never an, to be an unarmed ship. Um, clipper ships traded things like their weapons and bulk I know, cargo I know you to keep, speed. You, you, Algrid, you keep bringing this up, and I keep shooting you down when you say it's not a clipper ship, but you've also got to add a thousand years in room space. Uh, so you've brought yeah, that up a few times, idea, but I, I yeah. inevitably disagree with you. But the idea of a clipper ship in terms of our lore and, and, hist and our actual history was you sacrificed your cargo. Mm -hmm. Yep for speed and efficiency and, and, so and what going, did i and what i told you yeah was, and i know i know you've said it but they had holds true. they had cannons back then like actual metal yep. cannons and they and took we, them off the clipper ship yeah because of the weight but a laser yep. cannon like in a future yep. space game has no bearing on the on the weight because you're in space so that was my argument for that yep. yeah and i still and i still it doesn't change the argument of what cig said this is how we're doing the ship in terms of what it is and and it ties into the idea yeah but 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 it does clipper ships would but it would have but it does our would have it does because because of it being in the future the guns being lighter and the fact that you're in space it totally negates your, your, your point of view no because you've still got you've still got things like uh, your mass when you're in terms of your turning mode as we see in game we've still got things like mass when you're going into land on planets i'll give you the planet um, stuff so, i'll give you the planet stuff but again if the blockade there that would you'd have to specifically have a blockade on a planet it, and, and, and i mean on the planet not before yeah. you get to the planet so i think it's star wars where they did the blockade right and that was before you got to the planet so it doesn't it's not warranted there and, so, I, and so the I, idea of slipping past the blockade is they were using speed versus if you were going from like a effective. from one city to another on the same planet i could give you that i just don't see that happening it'd have to be between planets to be yeah. Oh man, that's such a can of worms. That's such but, a can of worms. Yeah. I, I, you know, I still, I still disagree with the it's not a clipper ship anymore, um, or you know, and therefore it's it's ruined. 
my argument it was never a clipper ship it was always uh, meant to be a big ship um just in the way that was initially designed and thought about um now you can disagree with that all you like i'm going to disagree with you all i like so <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's I think fine. at the end of the day, next question. We're yes. agreeing in terms of it is a much better ship now than it was. All right, Badges, next question. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, I've been um, I've been trying to answer, but I've been choking all the way through that. So <laughs> I'm back with you. Um, can I just say, guys, um, disagreement in chat is fine. We are of course going to disagree, especially when we don't have answers to most of these questions. That's great, uh, but please keep it civil. Don't make me get Nightbot out because I will. Um, Okay, so next question. Um, Cascadian, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, asks, any chance you could think for a capital info running ship, something like a flying server farm? Yeah, I, I, um, well, we've talked about this before. The MSR is is at best the large so te or, or the medium, so you, there's definitely room mm -hmm. for a, a larger data runner type style ship. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like the idea. I like it being something that's much rarer. So maybe it's something that you can only earn through the game. Maybe it's rep gated. Um, but I, I think there's definitely space for it when you see you've got the Vanguard Sentinel. Um, and the Vanguard Sentinel has a, what they call e warfare or electronic warfare um, capabilities, which is things like jamming. It's the ability to spoof, make false signals up. All stuff that we haven't touched in. Whilst it's not strictly data running, you can see how those two things link. Um, so yeah, I, I think that would be really cool. Um, albeit quite a rare, I think, ship. But yeah, I really like the idea of that. I, I also wonder whether the Endeavour kind of fits into that um, capital infra running ship. I know it's not an infra runner in terms of speed and running from back to forwards. But it does have the computer capacity to kind of crunch material, crunch information, and crack what, codes what is, and open stuff up. So, what is with this game and removing yeah. guns and stuff at the moment? Is this happening to anyone else? Like, like, just random guns gone. It's really weird. Mm -hmm. It's happened on like three ships today. So, mm -hmm. next. Benjamin okay, Ricky. Um, yeah. Um, so. Should the 890 jump have the highest tier med bed? This might give it no. a nice bump when people compare it to the Bunny Merchant. No, because um, then the Apollo is stuffed. The Endeavor is stuffed. No. And and quite honestly, if you watch the episode Algodon and I did, it basically is a, f a variant of the 890 jump. Mm. If you go back to that original plan, they turned it into a shop ship for several oh, look, reasons. I, I think if I if they gave a variant of the 890 jump that was a hospital, a private hospital, then yes. But if it's just your touring oh, yeah, ship, no. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. If they if they did have a, a hospital dedicated variant, yeah, I could get behind that. Like, you know, private hospital, then yes, but if it's not a hospital ship, then no. So, next. Uh, <laughs> Unless you want to chuck in a, a viewpoint there, Badges. Um... Yeah, I just don't think the um, I don't think Bunny Merchantman eight ninety jump comparisons are fair at the minute because they're two completely different things. And mm -hmm. if you know anything about kind of like uh, the the concept of luxury, can you, can you, then can you, having a can you actually elaborate on why you think they're so different? Because in the video we did, we actually strip it down. There is only a couple of things different between the two of them. It's not so, a, not not as far as you <laughs> think. It's quite low. So, um, the Barney Merchantman to 890 Jump kind of uh, comparison, um, they're two completely different things for two completely different purposes. Um, we don't even know if the Barney Merchantman will be able to accept VIP transport. The other thing is that if you're doing <laughs> VIP, the whole idea of luxury, having a huge cargo hold like that, luxury is not waiting for your cargo to be on and offloaded. Gotcha, stop firing. Gotcha, you fire that gun again and I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach through the screen and fucking wring your neck. Stop. <laughs> no. I, I would I would imagine um, um, with a cargo hold like the, eight, uh, the BMM's got, if you're doing luxury, it should mean that your pa passenger could get anything he wanted because you've got so much stuff. You should have everything he's going to want kind of packaged away and ready for him yeah. to get on his luxury mm. trip. Um, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it's it's. I don't. Uh, okay, uh, so yes. the other thing, the other thing that, that that I think you're missing is I'm not even talking about the VIP stuff. If you fundamentally, and, and I said in the video, like I literally say, if you fundamentally rip out the the luxury, like the 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 bar of the 890 jump, the atrium of the 890 jump, then you go to the banner merch man. You rip out the um a part of the cargo, the negotiation room, and the oh what the hell is the other end? The, the shops. Then the ships are very similar. They, they are really close. Like like not they're like ninety nine percent there, right? And so when we went back to the original image, there was an image that showed a shopping mall inside the eight ninety jump. So what, what what we are envisioning is happening, and instead of making a variant of the 890 jump, they just brought the Banner Merchant Man up and turned it into what would have been the variant, right? And that's got nothing to do with the VIP because the VIP is exclusively stayed with the 890 jump, right? Um, so what I'm just saying is, I, I like, like if you look at it on paper, there's, there's, a, there's a concept image of an 890 jump with a shop in it. Those said shops are now inside the Banner Merchant. It's not a hop, skip, and a jump to see what's happened, you know, over... You know, however many years, like what six, it, seven years. But that's that's a clarifying, and that again, that that shows that the two ships are different. You yeah, know, yeah, what yeah, could yeah, have yeah. been is, yeah. is what's going to have been, right? So yeah, that's, um, that, that's exactly all I'm trying to say is. Yeah. Uh, can you see that that's possibly what happened? Is all I was trying to ask. Um, oh really. yeah. I oh, wasn't yeah. trying to. I wasn't talking about anything to do with the VIP because I was no. fundamentally at the end of the day they'll just go, no, you can't do VIP <laughs> missions because no VIP person wants well, to be in a shop or cargo <laughs> ship, which I is mean, fundamentally I mean, what. Even they... if you, even if you could, right? Like the eight ninety jump gives you the ability to host much larger groups of people for a party. Yeah. So in the in the um, in the trailer, mm -hmm. we see huge amounts of people on board. That the whole thing it couldn't co possibly accommodate them. What yeah. you can do is host a party and then you can boot them all yeah. off somewhere and then you continue on with your select VIP group uh, and off you go. But in terms of like the Bunny Matchman mm. does look luxury on board and it does throw into Stark Relief 890 Jump kind of luxury. I but think every, me, every, everything, you everything you <laughs> mentioned right there is the, reason, <laughs> is the reason why they had to split the ships. Everything you just um, mentioned. It, it makes so much sense to me why it had to yes. be why they don't they, there is not a, a, a shopping <laughs> variant of the 89 jump yes. everything you just mentioned and, is is a hundred percent makes so much sense and, and the other thing with with luxury um and the amount of money that's going to be waved around on things like the 890 jump is of course they you know we can say this now looking back but of course a shopping version doesn't make sense because when these people have this much money they don't need to go like you know we as a cruise if we go on a cruise there are shops everywhere but that's because we save up money to go on holiday when these people have got so much money they can charter their own private space yacht to go places they've already bought everything they want yeah, you know yep. it doesn't have to be it coincide as this big event but i think the key difference in that luxury between bunny merchantman in and, and the 890 jump is we're not just talking different manufacturers we're talking different races the yeah. banu managed to trade with a vandal they've been going to the stars longer than humans have been a species i think um of course their ships are going to look something else when you go on board even the ones that aren't supposed to be luxury cruise ships are gonna look something else and, you know, there's space for them to coexist side by side is what I'm saying. So I don't see there being so much of a of a fight between 890 Jump and Bunny Merchman. In terms of the med bed, I have whole problems with the idea of respawning on ships anyway. Yeah. I don't like that thought. Um, but that's not the question you asked, so I'll shut up and I shall move on. No, but it's um, um, a good point. I think part of the part of the respawn on beds is really to help uh, in, in ships is really to help um, groups of friends who are, are gaming together so that you don't have to keep flying back to a, a space station yeah. to be respawned. Um, so yes. I can see the need that, for that. And that's why a dedicated ship like those, the Apollo and the Endeavour will, will, will be um, yeah. But yeah. In, ter in terms of the, the, the two ships, uh, the 890 and, and BMM, the BMM does. They did say in the in the last show that it does have VIP rooms for uh, guests. So it, whether you can or not, 
is still yet unknown. In terms mm. of a luxury, I think I'd agree. The 890 jump is more for the super rich, um, whereas the um, BMM is more Trumpian luxury, where you put everything on display and it's, it's ostentation, it's over the top, and it's the Banu showing that they're successful traders because they're rich and they've got everything else. So they, you know, they've got their holograms in their in their their stores showing all the awesome stuff they've got. So I think there is a um, there is a, a difference in, in in the two of them in that regard. Um, but um, I think the other way to look at it is, as well. Is, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right here because we're talking in circles. Next question. Because no, I want to finish. I want to finish what I'm saying because I haven't really said anything about this yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this point. And I think and it ties up with badges was saying in terms of luxury, but the 890 jumps luxury is really like hiring hiring those yachts today where it's not got the shops today they will take you to the shops if you need to go to them and that's probably the biggest difference as well and now we can go on to the next question um just to fire off a uh, a couple of points in chat um stinkfinger says it's not a luxury ship it's a traveling home bazaar and warship for the bunny no i'm answering uh criticism common criticism leveled at the 890 slash bunny management uh conversation uh do i have a hissy fit seeing bunks in the military vessels no seeing as i slept in one for a long time i have absolutely no problem with them at all um okay uh marcus waters asks is it just me or does it feel that cig has really started hitting their stride in designing ships i know a lot of people are not happy with the banning management but i feel the value is really evident what do you reckon fellas yeah it's all gone quiet <laughs> no I I, I I think they do i think they as time's gone on their, their <laughs> ship pipeline has become better and better and better they are yes. getting better at doing their ships, and the ships that are later are better than the ships that were earlier. Um, I do know there are lots of people who don't like the BNA Merchantman at the moment, and they'd rather it to be much like it was originally. But to me, it's mm -hmm. it's more more of what it was as early as I can remember than than anything else. So yeah, I think the value is definitely evident in that ship. Um. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, and I, I, I know X is going to agree with me on this. You put something like the 600i next to the 400i and talk about interior ship design. Yep. Um, yep. The, the two ships are so different to each other. The 600i, lots of wasted space, not a clear concept. There's areas mixed in with each other. The 400i is just, it's beautiful. Yep. Um, and, and makes a lot of, a, a lot of good use of not a lot of space. Um, yeah. So yes, agree completely. Um, you know, and, and for me, um, again, just looking at the outside, the Perseus, if I showed you that silhouette, you don't even have to be into games. You could tell me what that thing is. You, you, can, you can tell that it is a warship of some sort, um, you know, which is great because that's exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, yep. Nerison asks, Vanguard Warden, good ship, question mark? Uh, Hoplite would be the best variant of uh, the Vanguard. Go for especially, <laughs> especially at the moment. Well, the other thing is mm -hmm. you gotta you got to realise that that pod swaps out. So if you get the best yes. one, you've already got all the ones underneath. Yeah, technically you could go the other way as well and earn up. But you've also got the now to consider. So I, I would say, I don't know, it's up to you in that regard. But for me, I think the ha 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 Harbouring is a really good shipping game right now. Um, yeah, I'd, I don't know. I, think, I, I, I would expect the um, the Sentinel version would be the the best one to have, ultimately. Mm. But yeah, um, maybe long term. Yeah, like flavors, depending on who you are and what you want. Um, for me, the Sentinel is good because it's the most unique of those ships. We've got torpedo ships, we've got troop ships, we've got. Oh, shit, but we don't really have any warfish mm -hmm. ships, so at that point at the moment, that's why the Sentinel kind of, for me, is the better one to have, but down yeah. the track. Well, um, yeah. yeah, and I think the Vanguards are going to start showing their strength once we start getting jump points in. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. And their range really, you know, kind of comes to the fore. That's, that's why the Vanguards are heavies. They've got the range yeah, to go... 
a system across and return without having to have a safe harbour to refuel that. Yeah, that, that is that is really where they become come good. Any of those really long range ships and that are designed for that long range ships, and that is that is really is the correct me if I'm wrong, but is the Vanguard the only real super long range fighter we've got? I believe so, chap. Um, what Banner, is this? Range, 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 I think I think the Banner Defender's got some long range capability. I could be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure because mm. it because it runs with the um Banner the measurement. Banner. Yeah, I think that might be the other only other one I can think of. Yeah, yeah, Namek says Defender as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. As, as far as we know, um, and Karen's happen to say in chat as well. Yeah. Um, that um. Defender and the Vanguard are only ones that are built at the moment to have that long range. I'm sure they'll add to it, um, but that's it at the moment. Um, gents, if you don't mind, I'll answer for all of us on this one because I think there is a generic answer here. Mm. Limited Respawns asks, what is a good white fleet? Uh, mate, there is no one answer to that. It very much depends on what you want to do in the game and what you enjoy um, and, and what you have access to as well. Um, mm. There will be, and there are during the day, kind of us kind of kicking around on the Discord. By all means, whatever you see us in here, um, jump in um, and and say hello. Uh, obviously, you know, be mindful for the conversation that's going on. But if you want to jump in and ask a question like that, we're happy to help out. We kind of were, as far as I'm aware, we're one of the few sets of creators who are kind of quite readily available for you so you know if you want to come in and jump in and talk with us we've got the time to do that um and i know i'm on the next couple of days so mm. by all means yeah. sling us a message on discord if you've got it uh, and i can help out it doesn't hurt there's about six or seven of us so yeah yes we can exactly kind of yeah. it a bit better yeah. that's it um but yeah there's no one easy answer to that mate genuinely it's about what you're after yeah what you um, want, how you want to do it how much funds you got to do it to start off so yeah it's yeah um alsar j question if you got to design a ship what would you want it to be the so badges, I guess, obviously give us a give us a size and a, a purpose mm. is that the, the, the best way to answer that to keep it fairly brief yeah i think it would have to be the argo <laughs> badger garbage scout uh yeah <laughs> the argo badger garbage scout yeah yeah with with Mr. Bean's teddy bear taped yeah. to the outside yeah. of the front That's it. on the yeah. grill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thanks, mate. Or, 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 or you could call it the bin chicken if you're like the Australian variant. It's called the bin the chicken. Ibis. Love you. Yeah, the, the Ibis. Ibis. Yeah, the yeah. Ibis bin chicken. The, Ibis. the, Ibis the, bin the chicken. Rona mobile. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. How about yourself, Algrid? What would you go for? I think I, I'd, I'd probably go a destroyer. And I say that nice. because there was an Australian. Um, guy who was creating the um uh, just for his own hobby uh, a, a ship that could fit into the star citizen uniform universe and wait, it was hey, the, wait, um... wait 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 the salvage claims look there's salvage yep. claims in the build Ooh. yeah but you pull those things out and they've got a limited time to get them back to uh the location you need to go you know, the other thing I just um, realized is maybe the game's running badly because I didn't update before. Possibly possible. Uh, all right, I'm going to fly, I'm gonna fly us back to a, a, a landing pad, Gacho, and drop out and see if we can get the update. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah. Right, Okie dokie. Next question, please. Um, I think for mine... Um... I, I'm going to go with two because I'm greedy, but you can't stop me. Um, I'd love to design the battle cruiser which has been talked about in stretch goals. Um, if not that, I would love to do a large drone control ship. So lots of lots of um, bespoke drones that belong only to that ship and almost be like a drone combat ship. I um, okay. think so you Ender's missed the game or something like that. You should have called it the Executor's uh, drone <laughs> ship or something. So you missed the opportunity there to get back at me, but anyway. No. Why am I, I helping I, you? No, it's fine. I'll just call it Executes Beard. Yeah. It'll be it'll be small, unkempt, and unfinished. Uh, um, it'll be a dry ship. Yes. Well, yes, quite. Um, absolutely. Um, 
I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. No, um, <laughs> Okie dokie. That's all right. Um, I, I will be shaving before I go to Sydney, though. I just, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to. That's but how we you don't recognize. understand how cold it is down here, right? Yeah. Um, and and um, anyone that lives okay. in a cold place will realize why I'm not shaving my beard. It's just so damn warm. Oh. Mm. Even with my even with it. my limited hair, if I if I do the chrome day, you feel the cold. I, I had yeah. a I had a, a friend of mine that was a that's a woman asked me the other day why why haven't you shaved your beard or whatever, and I said if you understood what it was like to get, I said go get a blanket, and and when you're in bed like put blanket across like this and just and just realize how much warmer it is. That is why I'm not shaving my beard. And and she, I met her a couple of days later. And she's like, yeah, I now understand why men men have this fascination with beards because it's just so much warmer. Uh, it's like walking around with a blanket on your face. Anyway, I digress. Sorry. Great, great in winter, not great in summer. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I um, keep it trimmed in summer. As you know, if you've watched the videos, I don't tend to let it go just, that way. It's um, jealousy because I can't grow one. Well, right. I've got... Uh, I, I, yeah, but but I've, got, I've got no one to impress either. So, yeah. Well, there is not. If I um, a, a your audience. I don't have a audience I'm to not impress. Here. <laughs> no. There you go. You heard it here. <laughs> X shoot doesn't care about you. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Here we go. I love, I love, I love that even Gouch laughed at that one. Yeah, because <laughs> you like, monster. like you monster. Bloody, you and Paul dressing up like monkeys in your suits, and I'm just sitting here in my damn. Like, we care you? about our audience. Yeah, can you, we do you, a can can you, can you can we do that our music? audience is not worth caring for? No, I think they're can, worth can caring for, but I care for them in the information, not like dressing up like in monkey I, suits. I think we should do a poll in chat. How many people are impressed by Excuse Beard? No one's impressed by my beard at all. What? It's very if honest. you're impressed, two. If uh, you're not no, impressed, no, 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 no. I'll do, do it. it. Do no, it. we can, we can do a proper poll. No, 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 I'll do a proper poll. I'll do a proper poll. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, you guys should be hurt by his lack of concern and care for you guys. That's right. And, and then whilst we current beer, I'll put that in. Yeah. whilst we do um nightbot will kick your ass now mate be careful um and, and, okay and should we get so we in a that, suit? that's an, that's another question for the chat raw bacon taco asks without base building how probable will a high population in the pyro system be initially all of it <laughs> will all be in there because it will be new and exciting and like we haven't explored it yet yeah what it does after that don't know good question oh uh youtube just kicked my butt it just lagged or some shit and um I... youtube doesn't like you anymore see see how see how your negative uh community comments have impacted your youtube youtube hates you for that hey if you want a poll that says do you like agrid's hair i'd be quiet if you what know. hair exactly. what hair exactly <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, Clearly, they'd be what? talking about my goatee. That'd be that'd be about the only thing. So yeah. Maybe for the uh, bar citizen, Sean. What do you think? Sean Solo says, "I want to see an X in a suit for one episode." Yeah, we did that. It's been done. Oh, do we? No, you oh, just wore a tie. Dude. I you wore a tie. <laughs> That's all. I, I don't own a suit. That was the best I could do. Uh, let's see, Chuck Gacho. Um. What the hell? Why can't I? I had the yeah, I had the poll. Now the poll button's gone. What the hell's going on? Something weird is going on. And I apologize for the ship flying in circles. That's just. Can one of you two do the poll? Like, do you guys have got mod, uh, mod rights? So, are one of you two able to do it? Because I don't a... think you can do it. Oh, create a poll. Can you do it? All right. So, what's I can? What's the question we want? Um, what, do you... Uh, are you impressed by Execute's beard? Current, okay. current beard. <laughs> I'm I'm having an issue. I don't know why it's doing this. And as you can tell from my awesome flying, uh, yeah. Uh, that, uh, Gacho. Gacho, do you value your life? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I <laughs> I'll tap. My bad. Uh, there we go. There you go. That should be up. Yep. There we go. Yeah, it's up. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't think you should be impressed. I think it's terrible. But I know it's terrible. <laughs> but I don't care. Like, I've got that personality. I just don't give a shit. Um, 
Okie dokie. Um, just just, just, so just to put more... this out there, right? This is how much I don't give a shit, right? I was walking home last night, one block, I had my earpods in with Happy playing, and I'm dancing down the street, and there's like people in the street like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> That's how much I don't give a shit. So if you've yes. ever played the song Happy, which I'm sure some people have, why can't mm -hmm. I? I can't find the space station. It's eluding me. So, oh, there it is. So, yep, sorry. Go. Are we all sorry, guys? I'm joking to death here. Um, are we all happy with the answers without base building? How probable will a high population in the pyro system be? Are we all yep. happy with answer that? I said yep. lots at the beginning because it would be new and exciting. Mm, I think I it's going to boil down to... Um, because we know the, st the servers that are running Stanton are almost at capacity, right? We know that because when they did the first Xeno threat, they had to drop the player cap, which mm -hmm. you don't do unless the servers are going to struggle. And I don't know if anyone's noticed, but recently, if you try and join friends on a server, the servers are idling at 41, 42 people. Yeah. Part of that, I think, is to let friends on so you don't get frustrated, but also part of that, I think, is to alleviate performance issues. Mm, so true. what we might see is that certain activities are only available on certain servers to spread that load, so mm. that's going to govern a lot of it as well. Yeah. So it mm. might be that certain salvage activities, for example, are only available in Pyro. Yeah, um, look at the things we've lost in, in Stanton, just, just to help with the... Uh, the growth it's we lost as the banister and and the, I, <coughs> the icc station we've lost uh levski levski disappeared quite early uh, and they were all mm -hmm. they all disappeared not because they that was ready for them to go just because we need the space so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay um so scott johnson asks what does exploration look like in the future in your opinion I'm thinking about switching my Odyssey for the Perseus. I think actually, um, I'd refer to Space Tomato's video on this when you were good, the one he did with the uh, the, the probe stuff. Yeah, and I think the so. Triangulation. Because, That's a good video on it. Because I, they, are, they are talking about bringing probes in or missiles that you send off and do stuff. We know that the the Endeavour's got the massive telescope. We know that. Um, We've now got those wrecks out in the outer reaches of the Stanton system, and that'll be this, a similar thing. So, if I wasn't flying, I would link it. But Ken, if you know the video I'm talking about, it might be a bit hard for someone to find if they don't all know the one I'm talking about. But yeah, Space Tomato did one on 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 scanning and stuff, and it, it, he's got some good graphics in there that, that are, uh, makes yeah. it easy to understand. Okay, and I'm going to end the poll right here. Yep because it's a 50-50 split. Mm. Nice. So what that tells me is me combined oh, has... Someone squeaked in just at the end. Oh, you evil person. So that tells me that I have more friends combined than both of you. No, just... <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that just says people don't care. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. People don't give a shit. Just like I don't give a shit. Yeah. But yeah, you, you oh, know... I like the comment from someone that even though you keep saying you don't care what people think, you keep talking about what people think. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, sorry, that's just a comment that's been pulled out of chat because it has the word question in it. Um, yeah. Cascadian says, what are the odds we have a Bengal-sized or large cruise liner-type sh ship in the game? We kind of have. Um, the 890 is capital, um, but that's obviously luxury. We've got the Genesis Starliner, which is more of a 747 style thing mm. um i don't know um oh i don't know what do you think guys is there is there room for more in the touring market in terms of ships it's a room for a um i i think of i think of the um fifth element and the ocean liner mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. is there room for that yeah but there's room for that type of ship do we need it they, as a own ship? So, no. they so should have copied that ship now I think about it. That makes so much more sense. You know, so yeah, I, I could see I could mm. see it I could see that type of ship. Is the Can you imagine our grid? I'm just thinking here, sorry out loud. I've got I've got to do it because it's in my head. Can yep. you imagine if that actually had like a stage in it somewhere that you could do yep. like 
cinema, movies, stage singing. That would make that like a real, like like you could get there with a, a real content. Party shit. Yeah, you could there with a content creator. Like they could bring in an actual comedian, and you could have someone that's sitting there, and they could buy. T- wow, like like actually sell tickets in game, and do arty crafty stuff like you know like com- as i said stand-up comedians stuff like that yep. and if you get a really good rep for that that's yeah. a different level of vip on you, a you, whole you, nother level and you've got and you've got wow. a, you, know, you you if you've got a rep for doing good entertainment then you know and i imagine that's the type of thing cig kind of had in terms of wow um doing the vip stuff on an 890 jump you know if you mm. get a good rep for doing the vip stuff then you'll get people coming to you for to do that because that's what you'd expect um, or hope. But yeah, I could see, you know, a, a cruise liner being a much better, I think a cruise liner would certainly be better than an 890 because the 890 is kind of like that, that luxury, the luxury yacht, you know, if it's a crew on the yacht that's looking after you and it's a very small group, group of people and it's just, you hire that yacht and take it to where you want. But a cruise Man. liner, Okay. Is catering for the different all the different levels. So you got your luxury, you got your economy, you got you know first, second, and third <laughs> class. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it a different a different. Yeah, you know, I know they talked about doing that with the Starliner as well. So mm-hmm. uh, again, it's not mm. in the same vein, is it? Yeah, I I I, I just keep coming back to like something like the Sydney Opera House as a ship. Yeah. That'd be so like yeah yes it's niche as hell so it's something like akin to the maker or whatever. Yep. But the potential, like for content, like that 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 is literally wouldn't just be content creators though. Like can you imagine? Can can you imagine if um uh, I'm trying to think of someone um David Chappelle came in and actually did like a, a a show, and you could buy tickets to sit in the seats. Or you could actually have it live streaming in universe and all that stuff. That could be insane. That could be really mm-hmm. cool. I'm actually make like a Dave Chappelle avatar and he goes up on stage and Oh wow, that could be so cool. Um akin to what they do they did in Fortnite with um you know, they had that guy come in and play music tunes and concerts inside the game. That'd be really interesting. Yep. Anyway. Um Mine's not, update. Mine's not updating. Oh, now here it goes. This takes time. Hmm. Next question, please. Um, hokey dokey. Um, next up we have, um, if you're in Nyx and a friend just starts playing, how do you play together after launch? I'm guessing that there's going to be options for starting locations in multiple systems. Once we get multiple systems, um, there will be systems. Obviously, you won't be able to start in, and then just like the old MMOs of old, you're going to have to go back and get them. Uh, they have um, talked about in the past one of the, one of the solutions they did talk about for this was uh, agent smithing. Uh, the last I heard, agent smithing was still something they were considering, but how far and what it will do is another thing. But the whole idea of agent smithing does have a whole pile of other questions. So how do you stop um, exploit, exploiting the system? Um, and I don't think they've worked out that. And so I don't I don't know where that idea is at the moment. Um, it is one I hope they still have. It's, it's one of the reasons I have extra game packs uh, because they did talk at one point as being the extra game packs on an account would give you that ability to... Mm. Uh, have an NPC which your your friends would be able to a, a, agent Smith into, um, but it's so far away in terms of being worked out. It's not one of those things to really worry about and be bothered about. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. even if they do use a game packs as the option to do that, I fully expect that when they do that, they will actually sell uh, character slots for your account, i.e., game packs that aren't equipped with a ship or something. So it'd be significantly cheaper than what they are now but yeah it's it's something that's worth considering but it's not something worth worrying about it's even less of a worry than lti um so yeah what are your thoughts guys i was multitasking so so i missed out sorry um and i'm trying to get back in the game uh 
I think you go badgers. So I missed that one. Yeah, I, I think there are likely to be kind of hubs dotted around, um, very much like in in the same sort of idea as Eve, right? In the um, there are going to be areas where it's going to be common to start. You can have the same sort of starting out opportunities. Uh, maybe there are more challenging places that you can go into that don't, you know, that are higher risk uh, and less forgiving if you have a couple of bad runs with characters. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's the option to move in or be transported to a friend's location or an org's location um, as long as they're you know as long as there's no tactical advantage to be gained from it by orgs doing that um <clears throat> you know you can't do that in the most remote of places where all of a sudden you just recruit a bunch of new players and just push them all the way out to um you know the most remote thing without actually having to transport them there but yeah they'll find some way around it um i just want to um, say hello to the sorry, couple we've got a couple of you i didn't even see they were there. We've got a couple of viewers actually on um, on Twitch. Yes. In fact, we've got a first um, question from Twitch from Sangripper. Mm, go for it. Um, and the Sangripper asks, are we seeing CIG work on less of the small ships and start working on more large capital size ships? I think it's more of a, an across the board thing. Like, it's pretty logical. It's just like in real life. You see more small things than large things because they just like time, less time to do. Um, and it'll be much the same. So um, I just think you're going to always see more small ships come out because they're just easy to make. Um, yeah. It, it, it's pretty logical. There's not really much depth yeah. to it. Um, we do pretty much at the moment, we see, what, one big ship a year roughly, guys? Well, I, I, know, I know I'm... Because like this year we're not going to see one, but you, roughly yeah, one a year we kind of see, um, yep. you know, yeah. and then we see maybe one or two mediums, but then we see a lot more small ones. So yeah. and, and and even recently we just we just had the the Scorpius come into game. So, yep. um, so I, I think it's more that we're seeing the ship pipeline be more more polished. Yep. And so yep. they're able to work on on ships a lot quicker and and mm. um. And as time goes on, they, they're able to allocate more staff to to work on different things. It's, so it's, it's it's a whole host of things that determine what they're working on, what ships are working on. But I, I think I'd agree with you, Execute. It's not they're just focused on the small ships. They they try to do the whole lot, but mm. you tend to see the small ships come out a lot more than than the other ships. Mm -hmm. um... Yeah. Um... I'm, I'll make a prediction here, and there is nothing backing it up other than my own thought process. Um, I think we're probably going to see a delay on a lot of the capitals, and the reason for it is this: um, the Id sorry, not the address, the javelin uh, can take more players than a server at this point. I, yep, um, I, I, I think so. So, so, so I'm going to steer a little bit here, just aside from what you've said there, <laughs> and I see a lot of people like like lately in the last uh, maybe last two months. I think Arigad, you would have seen these too, where people go. Oh, so they've got this many ships, it's taking this long to do this, so therefore it's going to take them 10 years to get it done. They're not realizing that once Squadron 42 comes out, all this stuff they're spinning up, so Manchester, um, uh, Montreal, Frankfurt, and they're, you know, they're saying they're going from 750 people and they want to get to 1,500. By the time that comes online, that'll be the release of Squadron 42. And then, so you can have the people that we've got right now will go off and make Episode 2. All those new people are going to come into work exclusively on the PU. Do you oh, really the think the speed of ships is going to stay the same? No, they're going to chuck like a hundred people at that, and they're going to smash a lot of them out really quickly. They'll probably well, you, they'll probably get them out in three years instead of ten. Sorry. Even, yeah. even if you look at uh, the Montreal group at the moment, they are specifically being uh, keyed up to work on there you go. systems. Yep. Look at the derelicts and all that, and, and the, what, what we had just this year alone, the derelicts and the outposts. Uh, yep. in, in, for, it, so they're already picking up speed and you're seeing an increased work. Like, And, and now we're seeing designers come over from Squadron 42 into, you know, the, 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 the Frankfurt designers come over. We're seeing more gameplay going this year than we've probably, like, as I said at the start of this year, by the end of this year, we should have double the gameplay we had mm. In all of Star Citizen before that, and and you even look at you even look at uh, today's ISC. Like, even though they've been working on Pyro, there's, yeah. there's still 
polishing and adding things to Stanton. So yep. Stanton's finished, and yet it's not finished. Yep. So, yeah. So, so, so long story short, to kind of go against what you're kind of saying there, Badgers, sorry to track you under the bus, but it's going to increase in speed because they're just going to put more people on the problem. You know? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to have to push back on that and say that there's no point in putting in Idris in until the service can support them. Yep. Because regardless of yep. whether or not they're finished... Yep, I, uh, yep. Um, Th that's totally fine. But I'm, ta I'm talking about just the, sh the speed at which ships are created. I'm not talking about when server missions go in or whatever. But I do agree with you. Yes, a lot of the bigger ships are reliant on that tech. 100% mm -hmm. agreed. But I'm not. what I'm saying is it's not going to... Like, I'm literally seeing people who are like, I worked out by doing the math that it's going to take 13 years to get all the big capital ships done that they've said they're going to do. I don't, you know, I don't think that question, I don't think it was a question of pace at all. I think Sangroper's question was more a question of focus. Um, really, you know, are we really, seeing really, CIG work? I'm not talking... Are we seeing CIG work yeah. on less of the small ships and start working on more large and capital sized ships? I think it's going to be a, a standardized pace across the board, but to, 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 to not not that I was trying to chuck Sangrope under the bus there. I, I was trying to distinguish that I've been hearing a lot of that lately. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sorry yeah, if I made you feel like that was directed at you, Sangrope, it wasn't. Sorry. Yep. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Um, so, uh, Infinite Reach Ministries asks, do items upgraded in real money and pledge ships get wiped to original loadout? No, um, nothing you pay for gets wiped. Yep. So anything that's in your your hangar when you go to the website, that will be there when the wipe comes back. <laughs> in some mm. cases, the wipe's a good thing because you get your items back that someone yep, stole right. a few. If, if, you've, so, if you've lost some of those uh, limited items, like, you know, you you had a subscriber item that had disappeared, uh, you don't have to do a, 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 a game reset to get it back. It will come back. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I think he had that answered because his next question is actually him thanking someone for answering it. Um, Zen Strata asks, will combat-oriented ships have options for special seats allowing players to pilot them while wearing heavier than standard armor some will some won't yep uh, yeah that's a fair cop i think most um it might be an option you can put in later on but just they another have, they have always said <coughs> another thing that breaks the meta is what i was gonna say like you yep. know we were talking about that earlier so if there's a certain fighter that can take x person but then it loses armor or whatever blah 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 yeah like again that's just just the way you can different different like can i just I'm going to go up on tangent here. Why do we not have armor in the game yet? I don't understand. Like, why is armor not in the game? It's been around for so long, and it seems like such a simple thing. I, I don't understand why it's... Yeah. Like, like, like and, I, and this is someone that is... Uh, can anyone tell me... Like, and I, I'm i putting on a game developer hat here, right? Uh, why is there not armor in the game? I don't understand. It confuses me. Yeah. I want so, I want someone at CIG to answer for the, that for me. If someone at CIG is watching, can someone please reach out and just tell us why is armor not in the game? Why is ship armor not in game? Yep. But I think that question is more looking at the um, ability to wear heavy armor in say a fight in a fighter's yep. seat than other stuff. I did say it was a tangent. Sorry. <laughs> um. And I think it it, it it's it's got to be uh, nuanced by the fact that CIG have always said. That the you know there are seats that can take X and the seats that can't, and you're going to have to determine what you're going to you know what you're going to wear, and um, and if you're wearing heavy armor, there are some ships you won't be able to to fly, and that's why you'll have you know some of all the all the fighters are seeming to get these little storage places where you can store armor or weapons, and that's partly because when you're wearing them, you can't fly the ship. Um, so. Will they give the option to, you know, like they did with the the um, 300 series, to upgrade the seat so it can, you know, ah, oh, with this seat you can be wearing medium armor, with this seat you're wearing heavy armor. But then, how's that going to impact on your your ability to, to maneuver the ship? Because you've you've got a limited space of a of a cockpit, and you've got the bulk of the heavy armor, so you now can't move. So does that mean your ship's going to fly uh, with less agility or or something like that? Because you can't physically move in the ship as, as well as you would normally so don't know yeah <coughs> um the 
I think the long and short answer is that pilots of, <laughs> of light fighters, medium fighters, they're never going to be flying <laughs> around in heavy armor. Um, because you don't fly a, a, a Tomcat, you don't fly an F-35, you don't fly an A-10, land it, get out, and go straight into combat, right? Can you imagine that? Um, like, some guy's, like, on a mission, and he runs out, <laughs> he rips all his armor off, drops on the ground, just so he can get into the ship. I, I fully see that being a thing. You know, like, here you see in, like, the, the SEAL movies or whatever, and they, they, well, James Bond, like, he comes in, and he's coming in via some secret tunnel, and he's got to strip off the scuba suit, akin to that. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, and again, in drop seats, like, you know, um, mm. jump seats versus drop seats. Drop seats are going to be for people in heavy armor with weapons. Um, weapon racks aren't about um, storage of weapons. They're about ease of storage of weapons. So just because you don't have a weapon ba weapon rack that's ready to go that pops out and displays all your weapons, mm. that doesn't mean you aren't going to be able to store weapons. Um, everything they've said about physicalized inventory indicates you're going to be able to store weapons. They're just not going to be as accessible as, you know, I'm jumping right. out of your ship. If you do crash land your Gradius, you get that weapon rack out because it's a self-defense weapon, right? Um, and so on and so forth, you know, and jump yeah. seats are going to be about people sitting um, down who aren't accommodated on your ship. Jump seats... Uh, or sorry, drop seats are going to be about people in heavy armor or heavier armor. And you even look at the uh, difference of the, um, what's that? That the, the land vehicle, the 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 one that's built on the same chassis as the ballista. And I've just uh, the Spartan. Spartan. Yeah. Um, the Spartan. The seats are deliberately made so that if you're wearing heavy armor, you can sit in them and you've got the, the weapons rack next to you to ease of access to that weapon. Exactly just what Badgers was saying. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. you look at, say, the eight night, the, the uh, Starfarer's uh, seats in a in the hangar module. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are not made for wearing heavy armor. You look at the Nursa, that is not made for wearing heavy armor or having yeah. a weapons rack right, hand, right there. Yeah. And that's the difference between those ships and how they're working. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um okie dokie okay. so um Zerez asks would you say the Perseus is considered a long range fighter no uh, hey, gotta... no she's she's a frigate for I, a start I gotta ask didn't they weren't they doing a wipe why have I still got two million dollars um because it's PTU uh, yeah, PTU is not that's why yeah. I can't see it I'm such a dickhead yeah sorry I'll shut up now um Long range, yeah, possibly not long range, but it is It is a patrol boat, right? It is a patrol um, boat. It's designed as yeah. a patrol boat. It's a very heavily patrol boat, and in fact, in the yeah. law, the Perseus in, I think, the the, the Vega, uh, the, the Vandal invasion of Vega, there are a couple of, there are still a couple of uh, Perseus still existing in the in the Navy, and the Thunderchild, which is the one we got the skin for, uh, it apparently destroyed two destroyers. Yep. Talking about two Vandal destroyers, which is why it's, I think, it's one of the reasons why they reintroduced the ship in, in the modern era. Um, mm -hmm. But it was never a it was never a forward ship. And the question you've got to ask is, if the Perseus is such an awesome fighter that could destroy two Vandal destroyers, why had the Navy just discontinued the line? And I think the, it really comes down to it was a short range system defence ship, not a. Uh, not a ship to be used in your mobile fleet to be going between systems. And I think there was a, a change in the philosophy of, the, of how they were doing it, um, or how well, they were I mean, doing the ships or the fleet. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, you know, if you look at the conversation and apologies, SA will be able to speak to this SA mm -hmm. in chat, um, kicking him out. Um, but he will be able to speak to this quite in depth, I would imagine. But at the moment, within the US military, there is a long conversation about replacing the A-10. And the military are pushing back hard because a lot of the military's answer is there is nothing that is replacing it. Just the fact that it is an aging airframe is yep. not grounds to just get rid of it, right? Um, and they're talking about, you know, the increasing maintenance yep. costs and all that sort of stuff. Um the the fact is that although it fits in with doctrine um there are other reasons that it can be removed so it could be range as you say can it I could ask? be the fact that it's an aging airframe and it could be the fact that it just does not 
fit in with doctrine. That doesn't apply to the A10, Can but I, yeah. it would certainly apply to the Persis. The Persis does not fit in with revised fleet doctrine. Can I ask a question Sorry, just for us lay, lay, lay people? Like, say they have a, something like an aircraft carrier or the frame that you're talking about. Over the mm. lifetime, like, 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 I'm assuming the lifetime's like 20, 30 years, yeah? Yeah. So they do, I, I know retrofits are a thing. Do they go back mm. in and like update the computer technologies and give them like a huge massive overhaul throughout the entire ship? Or is it, no, that ship was made in 1985, so it's got 1985 tech and it never goes up? Like, how does that work in this day and age? Yeah. yeah. Because computers, um, like, within two years, computers are usually out of date at this point. Yeah. Um, are they designed? So, so, what I'm asking is that are they designed to, in a way, like, I'm assuming in the 80s, probably not, but now yeah. they'd be designing them around, so, oh, we're going to have new computers in the future, so they make them a bit more modular now than they were. Yeah, I'm assuming now's better than before. Yeah, so we used to, um, the UK had um, batches. So you would have the Type 22 frigate, for example, batch one, two, and three. And exactly like you said, the difference between batch ones and batch two, sorry, batch twos and batch threes, where the batch twos at the front had a ship to ship missile system. Hey, the wow. batch threes would replace that with a gun and a surface to air missile system. Who deleted that question that was in chat? Where did it go? It's gone. Who deleted it? It was you, wasn't it, Badgers? I bet it was you. I have I have been deleting that question since that was, it appeared. I will continue to delete that question. question. I'm not answering it. That was a legit you shut question. your filthy mouth. You <laughs> shut your filthy mouth. What we um, need what we need is yep. someone in chat besides execute to answer questions I why will is delete it. such a crap ship yeah i will delete I've asked it three times it i don't care who you are chat. no no you you cannot delete right. a, a, a proper question from our audience you delete mine. i'm quite That's happy fine. if you delete execute's question but you can't delete proper questions from an audience <laughs> unless uh, nightbot decides to uh, have a go at them yeah. I, I Nightbot will have a go at them <laughs> he's um, going to try and hack it and make it say any time you put person in a question no, 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 I'm just delete it. deletes the question Okay, um, so, so, but yes, um, you know, unfortunately now, um, due to the uncertain nature of shipbuilding, certainly in the UK, um, it's not being designed with such um, uh, kind of modularity in mind, and the reason for that is cost. Does anyone <laughs> find it... it's money. Does anyone find it crazy that this ship is actually like 600, and, I think it's about 650,000... UEC more expensive than the Hurricane? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I, I just went and brought it because I had the... We're about to have a wipe. Had two million sitting there. We'd been talking about this ship and I thought, you know, let's, let, let's kind of... You know, it's not something I've flown hardly at all. Um, yep. So let's <laughs> let's go do some low flying somewhere and... And, and, no and try and give it a bit of a... Yeah. You know, like appraisal, so to speak. Yes. I like uh, I like um, uh, SA's response to the whole computer question. Mm -hmm. um, doing his uh, sci-fi kind of tie-in. No, no, they're old computers for security reasons. These are the ones used by the government. Well, so that's so that's a really good point. Does that mean something like the Perseus is going to have? lower fi tech so you know how you go to grim hex and it's those lower quality consoles mm -hmm. the well, Perseus is just full of those <laughs> so yeah so the so the um design philosophy that was that it was all analog because you can't emp analog mm. that's right um you Spine know they, can't they, get you or, or the uh cylons can't literally that using uh, your tech up until very recently when they kind of ad abandoned the design philosophy um UK warships and, and US uh, NATO warships were built in theory to withstand the EMP generated by a nuclear blast. In theory, in practice, it wouldn't play, but um, all, the, all of the base systems like steering, they were mechanical cables. You can't EMP a mechanical cable. Well, you can't, it's just not going to do anything. Um, so, you know, you, you've got that sort of... Um, do you know what Zen Stratos put it perfectly? So the Persis is Battlestar Galactica. The old ships, certainly. Um yeah. you know, built to withstand, you know, kind of the the vulnerability of things in a digital age. Um, and, and, and the design right. of them is totally different. So Yes. You know, I, I look at them and I don't I look at the person and I don't see it as being a bad ship. 
it's just an old ship in terms of its in terms of its style and in terms of it, um, what it's doing. But when when you look at the Lorings and it says, oh, recently, you know, yes. it destroyed two destroyers, and that's why it's been pulled back as kind of this uh, ship sold to the public and been updated. So they've you've put got to ask shotguns on a stealth ship. What? Anyway, you know, sorry. you've got to ask why they why they didn't um, continue doing that and. And why why they let it drop out of the, the 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 navy's purchasing of a ship if it's such a good combat ship you've got to say okay there are other reasons why it dropped out of being a a frontline navy purchase ship and the reasons i can think of it's a patrol ship rather than a a mobile ship it, it wasn't fitting the navy what the navy saw as the purposes of what they were doing and so um it doesn't say it's a bad ship, it just says it's old and it, you know, the technology was old, it wasn't updated, but it was, it's it's doing a different purpose. The Navy saw they, their role was different and so they didn't need that ship anymore. And, um, yeah. Which then changes the whole discussion, I think, of whether the ship's good or not. Absolutely. Next um, so Ray Lauderbeck um, has asked, any chance of modularity for the Liberator? Hoping to see the ability to add living quarters, more fuel storage for embarked ships, and just the ability to enhance its utility. There's always a chance, but it's not. it wasn't planned, obviously, because yeah. they never and, mentioned and the sale. Even, and I think they even said at the time that people asked if there were changes for variants, and I think they said not at this time. Which usually says no, they hadn't been thinking about it. I give myself about two yeah. minutes before I crash this thing, by the way. Yes. Yep. Um, we promise not to laugh too much. Well, um, yeah, bad he crashes. So yeah. the thing with um, the thing with the um, Liberator in general is, is not a carrier, right? It's categorically not a carrier. It's a um, ferry. It's a ship shipping ship. It moves stuff from A to B. It is the spaceship equivalent of a low loader lorry. Right? Um, it doesn't have the... Uh, it doesn't have the crew quarters to support flight ops. It doesn't have, as you say, the fuel or any of those stuff because that's not what it's designed to do. Um, I think for something like that, we're looking at the Pegasus light carrier, maybe even the Kraken. But I even haven't brought. I even have issues with the Kraken being called a carrier. Um, well, but... <laughs> interestingly, with the Pegasus, in the recent uh, jump point, they did an update of the um, RSI um, portfolio, and mm. they listed all the RSI ships. And the Pegasus is no longer listed as an RSI ship. So whether they accidentally left it off. Or whether it's uh, dropped off the uh, the line of ships in law, that are mm -hmm. who knows? But yeah, it's a. I thought that was an interesting bit for myself Chris. anyway. Yeah. Next question. Yes, sir. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, do you want to grab that? Because I've lost my. Yep. So yeah. based on the advancement uh, advanced mechanics of the current event. Uh, is it a test drive for Theatres of War? So he's talking about the Siege of Orison being a test drive for Theatres of War. What do you think? Uh, I think it could be, yeah, a part of it. Definitely a test of the FPS mechanics. <laughs> I'll definitely could... be learnt, taking some data from it, at the very least, yeah. I could see it eventually being a scenario in Theatres of War. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, but yeah, I, I, it makes sense. What about your thoughts, uh, Badgers, if you're finished dying? Um, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, I, I think... Not good enough, die already! Because, rem <laughs> because <laughs> remember, the um, Theatres of War is the test bed for... for, um, mm. for Star Citizen, not the other way around. Um, uh, what I'm really interested... I don't know is the answer. Um, what I'm interested to see them test, uh, and the reason I've not gone looking for any spoilers about how it works or anything like that, um, is what they've said in this. Interestingly, when they were talking about this last week, they said, look, with most of our missions, if I just dropped you into the game at a bunker or at one of these locations, you'd be able to figure out what to do. Right, for most of them, nine times out of ten, the only variations really are things like 
can I shoot the um, the non-combat NPCs at the bunker? Yes or no. Um, and, and that's pretty much it, right? For the rest of it, um, it's really obvious what you've got to do. What they're doing now is they're showing us what it looks like. For, for, for a first pass, we're not going to signpost it to you. We're not going to hold your hand. You're going to have to figure it out for yourself. How well can they do that? Because, you know, especially for things like exploration, that's going to make all the difference. Is like, how detail-oriented are you? How good are you at finding this stuff? Um, sorry, I'm just about to throw up watching X fly. Sorry, I was um, alt-tabbing. <laughs> um, so that sort of stuff. Uh, mm. I don't know. I kind of hope that this is... It's also going to be a test bed for... How much is Star Citizen players are shooting each other, even though when that's not the point. Um, but yeah, those are the bits that I'm interested to see. Um, you know, because the the whole idea at the moment is that Theatres of War should be feeding that data back into. Sorry. Yeah, that looked like it hurt. Oh, I um, lasted more than two minutes though. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. You did. You did. It's <laughs> way longer than I was, was, was going to last. That's the yeah. first time I've ever done low flying, ever. So yeah, I don't know. But that certainly could be like the first. This is them getting theaters of water the same place, yeah. so that then it can start informing back. Yeah, interesting one. That's um, a good question. And I was doing that mouse and keyboard. <laughs> I wasn't doing that with sticks or anything fancy. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Cascadian asks, so when we heard about the idea of a large class ground vehicle, could we see capital class ground vehicles? Would love to see a massive ground miner. I think you'll get different sizes, and I I wouldn't be surprised, because you know at the moment how you've got like a, um, that they've made a class just for vehicles. I wouldn't be surprised if that expands, and then you get mm -hmm. like small, medium, large for vehicles. But yeah. I think capital. I don't know. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I think <laughs> capital really is a ship thing, not a vehicle thing. Yeah, that that would be my thinking. Yeah. Um. But just for ease of conversation, in terms of super large, large, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, th I think CIG in their pursuit of making Star Citizen a simulator, a, 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 a universe simulator, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, yep. But I, I don't think it's going to be something we get before launch. I would certainly expect to have all the ships, including the Endeavour, in before we started on stuff like that. Um, although, happy to be really? proved wrong, as CIG well, does I, 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 so often. So I'm at the whole thing where they've talked about now they want to have 100 ground vehicles and 200 ships. So I think that's a sooner rather than later thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I, mm -hmm. you can go... Eat, this is all speculating because you can go any, you can go any which way. Um, but then that also questions whether they're talking like you know, do, do does the Aurora's the Aurora ES MR LN mm. LX and whatever else we've got count as five vehicles or you, does it count as one? You, you and, know what I just realised, Alfred, is what? um we were talking about saying small, medium, and large um components for vehicles. Mm. The other one is what if they just put multiples in of the same the yep. vehicle size component? So you could have a truck that's got five batteries yep you know um that could be the other and way five, around and it five different and five different types of battery and, and... exactly yep um so so it may, maybe they only do have vehicle size components and i think they're called tiny or something i can't remember what i have to go look i think at... they are tiny I'd have to, at have to... the moment or extra small these days who knows what they're calling them these days i can't recall yeah piggles would know I have to um, with Piggles. Next. So, Gunship Dreams asks, do we think the Endeavour is going to radically change when it's actually worked on? Do we think it's going to get bigger. Um, do we think the look's going to change? Possibly, because uh, everything else seems to change. Is it going to get bigger? Yes. Yeah. Um, hopefully its role's not going to change in I'll... terms of what it is and being modular, but yeah. I'll say this Ooh. in the place where I can. She's a huge bitch! Right? <laughs> <laughs> um... I think it's, yeah, it's one of those questions I don't think we can answer um, at that level. Will it change? Yes. How will it change? Your guess is as good as ours. So. Um, oh, wait. I'm on a blank screen. Aren't I? What a dumb so, yep. There we go. <coughs> well, Mr. Badgers, I remember when we started here today and you were like, oh, yeah, I'll stay on for two hours. And guess what? It's been three hours. You've been here the whole time. 
All right, so yeah. we've got another Someone's one, gonna... two, three, yeah, four, five, six questions oh. to go. All right, so we're cutting yes. off the questions now. So fast one, sorry, you're going to miss out. Uh, but yeah, those last six and then we're kind of done. Okay, let's let's rapid fire these then to get these good people off to do whatever they do. Um, Stinkfinger says, yes, it gets wiped to original loadout. Do not think they understood your question. Apologies to whoever answered the question about whether or not your stuff gets wiped. Whatever you bought with real money doesn't get wiped. Yeah. Whatever no, you bought with that. their UEC will get wiped. Um, all your loadouts will be stock after wipe, yeah. I believe. Mm. Um, so, yes, apologies about that. Yeah. Um, John Priest asks, will all ships have a place to store armor and weapons? I believe going forward, that's the plan. I think even even the fighters are getting some some little storage place I, for I, armor I think, and weapons. I, I think there may be a few little exceptions, but yeah, generalistically, yeah. Uh, I think I think that the that is the answer. Do you know how we always said oh, every ship needs to have some small form of cargo? Yeah. I think that's their response to that. Yeah. Um, but you guys correct me if you think I'm wrong, and I'm more than happy to always be proven wrong. Um. um no, I, I think so. I think things like the Gladius, you might not get a full suit of armor in the Gladius. Mm. Um, you'll get guns. Yeah, um, yeah, you might yeah. be able to get like a chess piece or something. Arrow mm. as well. It's just so bloody small. Um, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'd certainly, if it's got an interior, then yes, I would expect it to have place to store armor. Because so they're so, talking so, about even if you stick it in a box and jam mm. it in the corner. Because the other, this is the thing I bring up. Like, like I've always said, like you want to be able to take a bit of food with you. But I think, quite honestly, now you can kind of carry food on your personage. That's all you need. Like, like, because because yeah. back in the day, we weren't even thinking that you'd be able to carry cargo on yourself. But if you can, if you can take a couple of burritos and a couple of water, like that's my main thing now. When I walk out, I, I take a couple of burritos. How could you are looking very. Yeah, I, I was noticing I'd gone really blurry and I was trying to uh, get it to kind of fix, but it doesn't yeah. want to fix up, so... Yeah. Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I I was starting to think you were a human Tic Tac. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm even worse. <laughs> I've, now, I've now made it even worse. I, I've absolutely yeah. screwed screwed the pooch, as they say. Yeah. So I, <laughs> so I reckon it's I reckon it's just people using the internet around where you are at the moment. Yep. So, yeah. It may well be. But yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, so just to let you know, um, we have cut off the questions now. Um, we've been going for three hours. Um, so the questions that we have um, are the ones that are going to be answered. Um, those that have been asked afterwards, mm. um, feel free to pop back next Thursday when we um, have that next ISC, same time. Um, um, so yeah. we have um, Craig B asks for 317.2. If we lose our gear, have the Verve figures out how to retrieve that gear without doing a reset yet? I assume you mean by that the stuff that we have bought. Yeah. yeah. No news, but there hasn't been any indication that it is coming. Yeah. So expect they talked to about with a... they talked about having a, a store where you could buy it back from. Mm -hmm. Um. So I I I I don't know about you, Algrid, but I think it would be very poignant to um so you don't have to make another whole new store for it something like the conscious store or the uh mile high club um at the entrance there's a console yeah <laughs> that that seems like a really wise move to me and, and even if you don't have conscious or you don't have the mile high club at least you can go there and there's that console so you can rebuy your stuff i, I would i would i would think using the chairman's club would even be better because even though the mile, the mile high club we've only got area 18 but the chairman's club you've got a lounge in crusader you've got a lounge in uh, numerous numerous locations so um yeah but have have something like that where you could actually buy those specialty items from those stores yeah mm -hmm. it would be nice to work around Bottom line, we don't know of anything coming for this, um, but if there is, then, you know, bonus. Sangrupo over on Twitch asks, um, speaking of the Perseus, is it an up gun, an up armored Connie, Connie or a gun turret-based Polaris? Uh, neither. It's, yeah. Because both of those ships are multi-role. The Perseus only has one purpose, and that's to inflict hate upon its enemies. Yeah. Um, and it's a... It's a no, I didn't. When they describe it, talking about it as being a river patrol boat. So, yeah, you know, think of your Vietnam river patrol boats or gun gunboats, and and it's totally different from 
what a yeah. Connie is or a Pilar or a Pilar. Except is, totally can I, can one I, size seven, it has four. Can I <laughs> let me synopsis and I just feel free to destroy me, but I'm trying to be simple mm -hmm. as possible here. In terms of role, probably the hammerhead is the closest, but as in patrol, right? So it's part mm -hmm. part hammerhead. The other part though that I think really sets this ship apart. Uh, that you kind of taught me is the custom ammo stuff. Uh, so it's almost like a ship mm -hmm. that can change its guns on the fly, right? And that, yeah. that to me, is that, before the patrol stuff, is its defining feature. If you could somehow yeah. get this ship somewhere beyond its reach, right? So if you've somehow got to drag it with a Starfarer, but you can get it there, this ship could be do some unexpected massive damage because it, it just like, ah, we picked this because they'll never get ships out here, right? And you somehow rock up with like a bunch of them, it would, it, they could turn the tide. Air, like, I'm like, some of the things we've talked about is like area denial shells, you know, like it, it puts like a corrosive cloud that you have to maneuver around. And again, if you can get a couple of those off, combining things like Nautiluses and stuff like you can you can see very quickly. Yeah. This ship has a really weird potential to be both offensive and defensive mm -hmm. in the right hands. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think the other big thing that, that you probably really like, and I know I'm putting words in your mouth, Badgers, uh, mm -hmm. is is the, the low crew requirement. Yeah. As, as long as that's all you put in my mouth, mate, yeah, then you, you feel free. Um, but yes, the um, it, it, where that comes from uh, is... The brochure for the Perseus specifically mentions customizable ammo, and they and they right. did. That's not interchangeable ammo. That's different. They, they did also. They did Sorry, also God. talk about um about six months after that, different types of mm -hmm. ammo types coming into the game, and and, yep. and if yes. you go back and look at ISCs and stuff like that, you'll see that they have started, talked about those as yeah. well. So it's not it's not just pipe dream one one point where they've talked about different ammo types they've talked mm. about different ammo types numerous times so we've also got yeah. guns in the game like the the lightning one and stuff like that yes i could one so the, see some PhD. kind of ch charge that hits a ship <laughs> and it just keeps exactly that emping yeah. the shit out of it for five minutes or, or exactly whatever. that the, the easy the easy one to do on because if you look at the artwork for the um process it has auto loaders um so they're just going to keep the shells are just going to keep clattering up auto loaders it's not necessarily easy to just change your ammo immediately that you want to fly you've got to do that further on down the line which means you've got a whole stack of rounds that you need to expel or shells that you need to get rid of before you get to the one that you've just selected so a really good example, as X has just said, mm. is you just electrify those rounds. So for ballistic rounds, which is what these things are, it could remove their ability to penetrate shields, but increase shield damage, mm. which a very, very simple change to do on the fly. Um, very simple thing for them to do, but electrify rounds just means that I can do that from the rounds that are next to come out. I flip the switch. Now I'm doing more damage to shields, which would give it a nice little advantage and could explain what they mean by customizable. Yeah. Anyway. Last um, thing the other Hang on, hang on, before we go on to the Plurus, the mm. last thing I want to hear is why oh, is the, why is the Perseus bad? What are the yeah. bad points about the Perseus? No, we cut off no, the no. questions. No, you no, no, no. Shoot, um, no, we, we just we just in. said we just that's said. not what Sangroper said. That's no. not what Sangroper uh, said. Based, based on oh, you, um, I gave sorry, you, Sangroper. I gave you, I'm sorry, Sangroper. I gave you all the good this, things. This is, he's, I gave he's putting this. No, 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 he's putting this on. on your shoulders, Sangroper. No, no, Don't take it personally. No, no, tit for tat. I gave you the good things. Now I want you to legitimately tell me the bad things. I'm not telling you what they are. I want you to tell me what are the bad things about the Perseus. There isn't bad things about the Perseus. It can be misused. Right. That, is a, that is a lie. Um, it can uh, there's be one, misused. There's, one, there's one thing very clearly that's bad about it. Is, is this the thing that I don't talk about? <coughs> it, it's the price. There you go. It's, it's... Uh, look, I, I, think, I think the other thing that's bad about it is it's, it's clearly a ship that they designed to be limited range in terms of where it can go um, i still think but, that's probably gonna be yeah. pretty far because it's kind of capitalistic in size i don't think it, yeah. like like we're not going to really see that our grid too much further down the line when no. we've got those really big systems like in stanton no it's gonna be no, it's, it's gonna it's not, not gonna well, it's, a, yeah. it's a system defense ship so if it's in stanton it's going to be able to get everywhere i, I it, 
to my to my view. It, yeah. It's my my understanding is, is it was a ship that was positioned on the Perry line. That means it was yep. a system. It was used in the system to defend a system. It was a system. Mm. It was a ship a type of ship that was used but, in the in what? the defense of your of Orion <laughs> and though you know in those places. So mm. it was system defense, but it wasn't meant to be going jumping from say Stanton to Nix mm -hmm. uh, with the I fleet. Mean, it, here's what. Here's what the Perseus isn't, right? It's not a patrol ship. Not in the not in the same vein that a Polaris is a patrol ship. Yeah. The whole point of a patrol is if it comes across something, it has a range of tools to be able to deal with what it's encountered. That is not the Perseus. The Perseus doesn't really have a toolbox. It's got varying grades of, I'm going to make you bleed. Hang on. Right? No, no, that's no, not I'm, I'm going to ask, though, but it's got different <coughs> types of ammo. Isn't that different types of tools? No, but, but what I mean is, is like, if it needs killing, it needs killing. That's one way to deal with something. So right? what you're saying is that. kill them quickly, kill them slowly is not tools. Um, <laughs> so, exactly. Whereas your Polaris is going to have... You've got the ability to have embarked marines. You've yeah. got the ability to take people prisoner. You have your own craft on board that can deal with stuff. You've got a lot of punch as well, certainly. Mm. But your your Polaris and, and you've got much as well. So you've got... Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you've you've got much bigger ones than the Perseus has, certainly. Um, so you've got that stuff to deal. The Perseus is a combat ship, pure and simple. And it's either supporting fleets or it's going to be the flagship or a standalone combat patrol, which is if I encounter the enemy, I can give them a bloody nose before I need to back off. If you're looking in chat, um, look, look, what SA, look what SA just said too. Uh, so SA has gone, the Perseus weakness is its range, mass, and limited cargo crew abilities. Yep. The, so range, um, I don't think we've got any details on that. Um, it's uh, fuel tank wise. I don't think it's it's showing any sort of thing. Mass, yeah, it's slow. All, all, Ninety-two. All, all we've got is um, is what they've mentioned, and, and what Algrid's saying is, exactly. is what they've mentioned. It, it kind of hints that mm -hmm. it's it, it's it's not as far reaching. And I would say Hammerhead probably falls into that ballpark yet too. Um, but, but wait and see. Put it this way: if I have to put it next to the ship that's probably the closest to it in the game, it would be the Hammerhead. And I think it's and I think it smashes Look. the Hammerhead. And I think the Hammerhead suffers from the same problem as Price, right? Yeah. And if I had to pick between the two, I would take the Perseus hands down. Half the crew size. Mm -hmm. um, yep. the, it, it sounds like it's more exciting, the crew ammo, and it punches at <coughs> least sideways where the Hammerhead yeah. punches down. So I've got no interest yeah. in it. Yeah. Oh, the, the thing um, that I think a lot of people find... Basically. Sorry, the thing that... <laughs> go, but go, Badger. Right. Sorry, go on. No, you go, Badger, because okay. you're going to cough. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> you're going to cough. <laughs> I'm going to... You talk, I'm going to die. All right, go. All right. So I think that the thing that um, everyone that I hear who really, you know, a lot of people I hear who really like the Perseus, and it's certainly against the Polaris, their argument is... The Polaris is 14 crew, this is 3 crew, and it's the small crew size of a Perseus that really makes it a 3 or 4, but yeah. compared to six. the Perseus, you know. So it's that significant crew size is what six, really six draws crew. a lot of people to to the Perseus as opposed to that the, is what to that the guys, Polaris. That's what um, uh, Wald was saying what, as well. What Wald, Wald Katz was saying on the weekend, yeah. Mm. yeah. So that was the big tipping for him, that, that, that he could just have so many less people. And I, I, I get that. Um, yeah, but but I keep coming back to what you and I keep saying. That yep. just reinforces my point. It's a three fifty ship, not a seven hundred dollars yep. ship. Um, but it, it, but that also top plays into what we always say about fix my fleet. You know, we're yep. always saying go big. But what yep. people don't hear us saying on the show as much as probably we we probably should be saying is that it go as big as you feel you can you and your friends and your core can cope with as opposed to just go big mm. because you know if, if you know you're never going to play with 30 odd people mm. or 80 people don't get a javelin mm. if you know you're not going to be pl ever playing with 20 plus people don't get an idris it's yeah. it's insanity if, if the stuff that we normally talk about is like a sledgehammer fix my fleet's like a scalpel where we yeah. we are totally customizing it to one person and i'll even go as far to say that one that we did last week was a bit vague and open because he still hadn't nailed down some stuff with his org yep. uh a lot of the ships that he wanted he and that he knew about like 
the industrial ones that are coming and stuff like that. So we did leave it open a fair bit yeah. um, and gave him flexibility. He also had, um, I don't want to say more money than God, but he had, he had a lot more money than most people. Yeah. And and that that does change. And like he was like, don't we like save money? He's like, no, I could put another. Th-. He'd no, just throw just, money I'm at the problem. Really it. It's just, yeah, yeah. His approach was really, okay, I've got all these ships. I just want to, con- I, I really want to consolidate and work out the best for what I want to do. Uh, and that was different. And even the even the fleet that was put up as as our fleet as one, he'd came come back and said, "Hey, this is what I've got." And I've got rid of all the small fighters because they're just chewing up credits. And I yeah, I can I get I'll be able to buy them yeah. buy them in game more easily than I can get the bigger ships. So, um, so hello to everyone. This is Jax. Hello, Jax. He's hungry. Um, He's come for food. But I I think the key thing with um, fix my fleet is. It's not just recommending the big ships. We also, you know, if someone says, oh, this ship is a must-have, I must have this ship in my fleet, and we say, okay, it just stays in the fleet. And We've seen might, the opposite. Uh, really... We've seen the opposite, though, too, haven't we? <laughs> yep. My favourite ship's the Reclaimer, and no Reclaimers. I remember that. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you, you said your favourite ship's the Reclaimer. Where is it? Mm. Oh, uh, well, now you know, that I'm not choking my guts up, mm-hmm. um, the best way I can say that I agree with X in terms of the Parasys' only drawback being its price, uh, mm. despite being a staunch supporter of that platform, I don't own it. Because yeah. there are so much better things I could spend 700 but you quid are on, very, frankly. You're very close to it, though, aren't you? I think, we, what was it, 40, um, 40 pound or something? I, you're it just, yeah, it, it, it fit, yeah, and, and just from a concept point of view, it fits in my head. Maybe I need to do a video on my channel, I can point people at that and take it through I, it I, at I, length. But anyway, we are, there are three more questions to get through and we are delaying these people their answers. So um, having established that the Persis is God tier, let's go on to uh, Ted <laughs> Wendelbo. <laughs> that, that is a video um, that you will never see on this channel. Says, anyway, next. Um, uh, sorry, With you, you were blaspheming fighters. when you said that because we all know the Endeavor is the god ship. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the, the what? Sorry, the Endeavor. There's the a what? video called Endeavor God Tier. There's literally a video called Endeavor God Tier. Anyway, yeah, dare uh, you blaspheme? Uh, um, me. <sighs> so, <coughs> anyway, um, did everyone else want their questions answered, or are we just going to argue uh, about the no. balls and the processes? That, that's um, what they're here for, just to see us, bitch. Anyway, all right, go on. Next question. <laughs> right. With most fighters being carrier based, what does and I'm going to have to go and cough my guts up again. Um, what does CRG have in mind for cargo escort? What was the question? Hang on. Because most, so Ted Whittlebaum says because most fighters are carrier based. What does CRG have in mind for cargo escort? Escort. I'm assuming you're meaning for long range escort, and mm. that would be long range fighters. Yeah, they have uh, a lot. They have a lot of fighters escorting the whole series and all of the concept of, and I. I that's got to have come from somewhere. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. I would assume you've got something like a Polaris flying with a sh- with that fleet, mm. with its hangar, or a or a BMM with that fleet with its hangar. You can um, also, yeah, you could also see a Liberator or a Polaris yep. or a- anything that can have those fighters cycle through and repair and refuel and, and stuff like that. That that but, that is what it's going to be. I and I I would say. Now I think about it, that is a really good use of the Liberator, especially with the long rangeness, so to speak, that they've talked about with that ship. That's interesting. Uh, the other thing, the other thing you would have for cargo escort for those long range fleets mm. is you'd be using your long range fighters, so you'd be using a Vanguard yep. or your Defender. It, it, um, it, it literally would come down to the quantity of cargo that needs to be protected, the range you're going and stuff like that. Because if you're only just going across one system, yeah, Vanguard. But if you're going multiple systems, it, it also depends on just what ships you feel like taking. Yeah, you know, like I could, I could say, uh, you know, Redeemer, uh, Vanguards, you know, the ships that have longer range and big pew pew or good pew pew or survivability. Um, and depending on what other ships you've got in that fleet, if you've got a if you've got a Kraken flying around with you, well, you've got all your fighters. If you've got, mm. um, so it's it's not just a straight up answer. Um, and if if uh, badges have stopped dying, he might come in and answer that question as well. All right, um, I will I will do my best. Apologies if I suddenly mute. Mm. Um, so you can have a bunch of options here. Um, it's all going to be threat risk versus reward and i'm sorry i'm using that old game chat right Mm -hmm. but route is going to be one way you're going to protect your cargo 
selecting fighters from each system. So you were met at a jump point, you were taken to a jump point, and then you change companies that does that. Um, one of the ways that we deal with piracy in the real world is we establish shipping corridors. There is one um, north Wait, sorry, of the sorry. Somali coast. Sorry, you said did you? Sorry, it came through either startled, uh, garbled for me. Um, but did you say shipping cor corridors? Yeah, cool. That's what, I thought you said. So it, it, effectively, you, you by compressing the distance at which all the cargo ships are, i.e., you put them in a narrow corridor, it's much easier for fewer ships to patrol it and defend what's in it, right? Yeah. Um, so that's what's happening off Somalia. That's where a lot of the footage on YouTube comes from, um, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, you could also have convoys, so you group cargo into groups. It drops the cost for everybody of hiring a ship that is more um, suitable. So maybe you have an Idris as your support for five or six jumps, because it has fighters on board, it has huge combat capability in itself. And if you're doing the spreading that cost over six or seven hull E's, actually, that's doable, right? Um, range with fighters is always going to be the problem. They've got to be flying from somewhere, um, you know, and they've got to have somewhere friendly to recharge. So in the core systems around Earth and stuff, I don't see it being much of a problem. Go without escorts is my guess uh, as soon as you start getting to the high risk high reward systems what the hell are you doing taking a holly <laughs> um what the hell are you doing uh, with your holly, holly outside of the uh, flight corridors yeah so absolutely um so <clears throat> yeah um Marek asks me um, this is to do with the Siege of Origin. Following up with the missions avoiding handholding, do you think higher rep missions should have variants that give more autonomy and even higher pay? So I'd love to see more ways to complete missions. Um, very much like the one in Crusader, the PI wanted, where you go and try and determine why the shipping hub exploded. Mm. Yeah. I'd love why, to see more Why stuff don't like they that. want to pay his insurance? Because they say he's guilty. And yeah. Yes. I, I would love to see more stuff like that. Um, and then for the last question um, Is there a niche for a starter ambulance ship, you think? Um, say something like a Crusader ambulance with two crew and one modular bed shop. I need my Crusader ambulance. Say, say like a Cutlass Red? <laughs> so Cutlass Red. Like Actually, Cutlass Red. Th that was interesting. You weren't here last week. So badges. So we did. Uh, we did. We did two two polls last week. First one was, do you think mm -hmm. there needs to be a new a, another starter ship? Um, and one of the ones like people float around was a Crusader. And so I I went higher and I said, what do you think about um a, a Crusader ship that's like at a freelancer cutlass level? And mm -hmm. both of them were around about seventy percent. The first one was seventy percent. No, we don't need another starter. And the second one was seventy percent. Yes, we we, we kind of do need another ship because if you go up to like the Connie size, mm. there's got what five or six daily driver S style ships there, and then down the mm -hmm. bottom, I mean, same thing. But in that middle area, in that middle range, it's kind of bare. Yeah, they they, they could leave easily have another three or four in there. Yep. I think. Um, but you know, so yeah. So Would it be good to what send our hospital sorry. ship? Yep. Um, do we need another ambulance ship? At the moment, no. Like at the moment, I think we need the red should have its uh, respawn ability just to ease of gameplay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would have left that on to a little while later. I think mm. they cut it off too early, but I think the reason they did is they're trying to think of balance reasons. Yep. Um, but by the same token, seriously, you can already do it in the Carrack. And you can do yep. it in other ships. It's just, well, it's just more you can of do a it nuisance. In the Carrack and the 890, and, yeah, I, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just, but it's a bit, bit more of a nuisance. Um, hmm. tying us to but, planets but, or but, systems. But, so, but guess yeah. what? The Apollo's on the roadmap now. Yep. So, uh, and that, and that really answers that, that ambulance ship because it hmm. will be able to do six, six tier three beds or two tier yep. two or, or, or four tier two or two tier two one. So. Or, or vice versa, whichever way the order goes, because I always I'm, stuff it up. I'm hoping it leans more towards the Mantis design philosophy than the... Oh, I'd love it I to think, look like I, a Mantis I, and, I, and I think that'll answer a big question to um, 
after Squadron 42 comes out, will they rework the Connie? And I'm fully expecting, because of the... the well, that's obviously in Squadron 42. Once that comes out, I think we'll see an overhaul of the Connie. And, and, yeah. and you even hear things like... Um, I think John Cruz even mm. said it, you know, RSI is mm. named after Chris Roberts. If you think the Connie is going to be a garbage ship, then... And I'm putting I'm I'm putting his words into you know into my speak, mm -hmm. but then you're, you're nuts. Um, it will be a a, a great ship. How great? Mm. But yeah. Um, there's two questions here. I'm going to ask that are past the cutoff, but there's only two, so I'm going to do them real quick. First one is question: When is Sada Ball coming? I think Sada Ball was a filler for something for us to do while we were waiting. So I think now it'll be a lot later, especially if you can bring something like. Theaters of War in, why would you ever do Sada Ball? So Sada Ball probably will eventually come in way down the track after release now. It is certainly a game that they do want in-game, mm. but it, it means... And I do know they did have a Sada Ball arena that was built, but I do believe it was built by Euphonic and it was the wrong metric, so everything they did was basically tossed out the window because it was too small and didn't fit, so that's probably half a problem. Yeah, uh, last last question is, when will you guys fix your camera situation? And the first question was by Black Dream Hunk. This one was by Scissor Fuzz, uh, and they're both on Twitch. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically, once I've exhausted every possible ability of... I don't want to go out and spend two grand on a camera. I just I just don't want to do it. Um, it's a lot of money, um, and uh, I don't want to rebuy the same camera because I'm worried I'm going to have the same issues. Uh, but long story short, I am down to the last two possible things that could possibly be to fix it. And funnily enough, it's our grid's camera stuffing up that actually led to me what it possibly could be. Um, and the thing is both our, so me and our grid's cameras run on this thing called a, uh, you, you plug it in where the battery goes and it basically runs off wall, off the, the mains power. Um, and basically our grid's started freezing and he linked it back to there. And so I've now gone and brought a new one and I'm hoping that that's what's wrong with mine. And it does line up. It makes a lot of sense because mine keeps kind of turning off. So if it's the power cutting out, hence the battery essentially going flat, it could be all that. Yeah, the, other way, so, the other way I could do it is I guess I could just charge up the battery and do one shell <laughs> on the battery and that would tell yeah. me as well. But I've got a new one coming. So, so. And, I, and I did consider doing that when, when mine first went as well, when the when cord went. Um, but we got you a new one, didn't you? So you're yeah. on the new one now and so he's, not uh, having, he's not having any issues. So. The, the, battery, the battery was just dying. Just, it was just cutting off and it was because I worked out that it was the battery just wasn't charging. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just turning off the camera. Yeah. Um, and so we looked at the options and got a new charger and it seems to be working mm. um i still get the issue if i change programs mm. i get a freeze but i think that's more a spark yeah. cam problem rather than yeah rather and, than and to, be, to, to be honest with you rather than spending two grand on a new camera for me i'd rather put my money towards um mr badges here and get him a camera because his camera's out of commission yeah, his camera is even worse than ours so mm. You're not very photogenic, Jax. I'm trying it to is, hold your face up to that camera. because it's broke up. Um, he wants down. Yeah. All right, say goodbye, so, everyone. So because of that, we do need you guys all like, subscribe, hit that bell. Share. Every day that we're going to keep saying share. share. We always forget share. And share. Yeah. Share the video. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell, because that feeds the algorithm. That means uh, it goes out to more people. Mm. Uh, it means we get more ad revenue. That mm. helps as well. Um, if you really, really like what we do, there's got Patreon, there's a uh, YouTube membership, there's the, uh, you know, the, the thank you type donations. All of those things will help improve those but situations it, but, and solve hardware issues and all, other stuff and improve all the, our quality. All the money that we get goes straight back into the channel. So, yeah. So, um, mm. Julian, I'm afraid, my friend, you've been debated. Mm -hmm. um, the reason they talk, they said talking about bad ships and put the passes on was because I was going on and they like doing it to wind me up. Um, so, yes. Uh, I thought you were talking it, to me then. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Why is he calling me by my yeah. real name? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Well, you've, 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 you've no, people, the, uh, no, 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 no. The bag, yeah. people, no, no. People that have known me long enough know my name's Julian. I, <laughs> so, so way back when I, 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 I was, yeah. we went by Julian uh, and then our online name. So my name was Julian yeah. X. And, uh, so, yeah. and the answer to that question really is, even the ships we say are bad, like fighters, 
mm. for fighters we like playing. Like you saw Execute today, he was flying around in the in the Hurricane and, and the Raven, and so we like those ships. Mm. It's just that they're not value; they're just not good value for they're money. In, they're in-game earning, and I, and I think. I think over time, as things have gone on, people are starting to understand what we've been trying to say. We're not trying to say, to, like, like that stuff shit. We're just trying to get you the best, uh, you know, the most, like, again, if you've got what, that one big ship, you can earn down. You know, all that type of yeah. analogy. It's, just, it's taking that little dollar that you have and stretching as, as yeah. far as you can. So, you know, you're at the bottom of the Vegemite jar and you're trying to get as much across the yeah. bird as you possibly can, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, there are very few ships we actually think are really bad. Like mm. even even the the criticisms of the, the Odyssey, mm. um, and not because we actually think the Odyssey is bad. We actually think the Odyssey's got a very unique purpose. Just for it's the price. Just a, mm. It's the price, and they, and they didn't tell us what it was. A bit of it, yeah. Kind of, the deception they, they, they element. Left, they left all that stuff off and yeah. tried to make it a, an absolute par for par equivalent with a Carrick, and it's not. It's a it's yeah. in the same vein, but it's a different ship. And yeah, and I blame them. I like, man, if I ever, I really want to interview the head of marketing. I really, but you know, really because do. you want to have a go at them. They're not going. No, I don't. No, no, I do, no, I don't want to have a go at him. I just want to put myself in his shoes and have him tell me why you they did what they do. And I and I know it all comes back to trying. Understanding of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I want it because I don't understand marketing, right? I'm not a marketing person, but I, but, but one of the things we have to do here is put ourselves in other people's shoes so we can understand stuff. And I really want to understand things like the steel, like that yeah. just seems like such a, like that, that, that must have cost them more than they ever gained. Do you know what I mean? Like, like just the, 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 the bad taste that's left in people's mouth and the Odyssey, it did the similar thing, and mm. and it's just little things like that, like, like. Man, I could run a poll. Do, do, you know, like, like, do you rather that CIG be honest with you, or, or or try and make as much money as possible to fund the game? And people are going to understand why they do it. They're just going to. It just feels shitty. You know, like we. You know, they're dealing with an audience that's. I'm going to be honest. I think a Star Citizen audience is far more switched on than an average gamer audience, and I do think that comes. A little bit with the maturity of the audience that have been around for a little bit longer right and so when you turn around and and try to pull the wool over our eyes or whatever that uh that, that doesn't tend to go down so well right and, you, and i think that's what it was with the was the odyssey it was that it really felt like they were pulling the you know yeah it's got a it's got Treating Zeon like, gravity generator and Zeon lifts and a U viewing screen. Uh, yeah. you know. and they tried to treat us like regular Call of Duty players or whatever, right? But uh, uh, you know, that's you know, like that, that. And I'd say they're somewhere between you know fifteen to thirty year olds. Where I'd say you know we're more likely you know thirty to fifty year olds somewhere in that. Mm. But and I'm averaging it out, right? But I'm just trying to give you a vague idea. Um, yeah. Yeah, but maybe we'll talk about that next time, right? So next next week we'll go. If if, if you guys remember, you know the regulars yeah. that are here, we we will, we will do some polls, and I'd just be interested to test the water on what you guys and how you guys feel um, how CIG treated as an audience. So so we might we, that's a difficult conversation to have and to be honest with ourselves and kind of being a bit honest with CIG. But I think that might be an interesting one for next week, especially since we don't have an ISC. So that might give us. I don't know. What do you guys think? Badges and Hagrid? Is that a yeah. an interesting... Yeah. So, uh, yeah. one that looks at um, giving positive feedback or, or constructive feedback. To CIG, which is something we do here a lot. We we, we, we we don't just pile on and shit on them. We go, like, uh, this is what you, how you need to do to fix it and and tell them how we feel. And, and, uh, yeah. and sometimes, it, you know... We make criticisms, and I, I can remember a time they were looking at there was one of the ships I can't remember which one it was, and the backers were saying, "Do this, do this, do this," and they said, "We've done this. It didn't work." Uh, and the audience said, "No, do this, do this, do this," and they said, "Okay," and they did it, and then everyone was saying, "It didn't work. It didn't work," and they said, "We told you, but you didn't. You didn't believe us." And so we are now closer to a four-hour stream than a three-hour stream. And I now understand why my cats are here because I should have been out there 40 minutes ago to feed them. Um, but yeah, with that, um, Badger, is there anything you would like to add before we 
Uh, no, I'm all good. Thanks very much for hanging out, guys. Yeah. Um, it's always good fun. Um, but like I said, if you see us hanging out in the um, mm -hmm. channels in here, mm -hmm. please feel free to pop in and say hello. And if you know anyone that wants to donate a fresh set of lungs to Badgers, uh, you can forward that to us on the Discord as well. Much appreciated. <laughs> because he's dying slowly yep. um yeah um i uh, as i said not this week but the week after there will be no stream because i'll be heading to sydney to hang out with our grid and a bunch of i know Kronzi's gonna be there uh general desperado is gonna be i think that's the would have to be the four biggest creators in australia are gonna be there so that's pretty cool uh, do, do you know if anyone from cig is gonna make it i have not heard yet if we could if uh, if there is a large screen there uh, that we can access on the rooftop. Mm -hmm. um, we may be able to get a the possibility we may be able to get a, a, a YouTube kind of Skype call going, but that would be that's mm. at the very least. Uh, that's kind of like that option at the moment. Yeah, so. Alvin and I will probably <laughs> if we don't do a live stream that that would be might be a little bit more difficult, but we will de endeavour to at least get a recording done. Um, so mm. you can see some of the us Australian guys together because um, just the idea of the bar system to me is very, very appealing. Um, even just being so, in the chat with you guys is the same thing, you know, like talking to like-minded people and, and, and the discourse is really cool. So, yeah. So that is uh, the 16th, which for most of you yep. guys would be the 15th Yep. from about 3.30 p.m. our time. If you're an Australian, 3.30 p.m. Sydney uh, at the Aurora Hotel right next door to um, the Sydney Central Rail Station. So, yeah. But we'll talk about more about that next week as well. All right. Um, yeah, as Agrid said, like, subscribe, Patreon, blah, 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 blah. Um, if I knew how to do a raid, I'd do a raid, but we don't. We haven't worked out how YouTube. to do that yet. <laughs> YouTube doesn't like raids. But with that, guys, have a great week, and um, we'll see you next He's week. He's been execute. Badges in the void. And he's, been, the and he's been our grid. Oh, We're out of here. Shut up, badges. All right, here we go.